مشعل تمر واتس اب بري ام جود ثانك يو فور هافينج مي فاينلي دوينغ ذس يس اتس بين ا هاف مينيت اي ثينك وي ذس از اور ثيرد اتمبت ثيرد تايمز ذا تشارم يا هاي يو بن الحمد لله جود هاو ار يو وي ديد ذس اون انغامي بس ات واز ان اوديو اونلي بس فاينلي وي جيت تو دو ذا اوديو اند فيديو اي ريمبر ذاتس وين يو سيد ذا فيرست تايم ذات يو اولسو وير ا ميوزيشن Yes, that's right. Or a musician. Yeah, yeah. you're going back to producing again. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, welcome, man. Doing some uh, media blast and, and, and uh, a few interviews. Yes, and uh, also meeting with some of the DSPs back here, back home, Very which cool. I think is really important. And it's actually will be my first time, my first time meeting them too. Really? Yeah, I've yet to meet the guys at Apple, the people at Spotify from, you know, from back here in the region yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. that like I don't know, I'm excited man I think it's I can see it I can't like it's still surreal to me how much everything has been changing so quickly yeah I don't know how much you know but I had like a point also in around I think like 2021 or you know late 2021 where I kind of like disappeared you told me about that but I want to know more about it what what brought that you know, I mean a lot of people were going through a lot during those couple of years it was a sort of hopelessness You know, I've been I've been thinking about it since like the last podcast, which is the only time I actually let myself talk about this stuff. Because otherwise, I only talk about it in music. But it was it was hopelessness, really, and that's like as someone who's creating, no matter what you're doing, really, and you're putting it out there. That is such an important thing to realize and understand that it's not real. This trip, I was supposed to be on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Happy vacation. It didn't happen. It didn't <laughs> yeah. work out. And, it, and we can't. We can't. Musab and I, can he come here and just say hi? Honestly, I'm so proud of this guy. He can. Musab, <laughs> you have to. You have to. You have to. You have to. <laughs> this dude. Hey, oh, shout dude. out to Musab. Musab to is, is yes. Mishal's manager. Get a little lower just so the camera can see okay. you. Uh, this yeah. is Musab. He and I have been uh, in contact for a, a, a hot minute. And... Man, kudos to what you and, and Mashad are doing. You're, you're, you're killing it. This is amazing. So did, you, you know. It's been a wonderful ride, yeah. I can, I can imagine. You're doing an amazing job. You're an amazing artist. You guys are a really good fit. Yes, yeah. I don't know. What I'm trying to say really is that if you're making stuff out there or now when you go into the producing and stuff, and me also telling myself this, Mish, when you look at this, looking back in the future, when you get that feeling of hopelessness, oh, what's the point? Why am I even doing this? If anything, I'm just embarrassing myself in the future. Why the hell am I? And then you end up in this loop where you're making so much content or making so much music and nobody's seeing it but you. Nobody hears it but you. And the fact of the matter is, we don't live as long as our songs. That's true. So who cares what we think or what anyone alive right now thinks? Maybe someone in the next generation will like it. So put it out. <laughs> you know, like... That's right. That's that, right. That's something I wanted to say just to have it have it in there, you know, just to, for... Uh, let, let history yeah. let history record on this day, Monday, the 4th of September, 2023. Mishad was here saying these things. I can completely relate to you, man. A hundred percent, man. A hundred percent. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. And to fall to it is nothing but a waste, waste of time. But you know what? It's, it's fuel. If you use it as fuel, I mean, look, you're going to have your ups and downs, but I think it has to start with you. You make music for yourself first, and then you make it for others. It's therapy, right? And, yeah. and I'm sure you can relate to, to a lot of this. I mean, I can hear it in, in your sound, in your songs, in your songwriting. Uh, it's a gift. that you get to share it with, you know, an audience, you know, but I'm sure you've seen, down. you've seen, you know, people's reactions, you know, to, to your stuff. It touches people. It, <clears throat> it, it's something that's, it's, it's a calling. It's weird. Also, it's not what you expect. It's never what you expect. I did, uh, like, uh, before yesterday, was it before yesterday or yesterday? It was a couple of days ago or before yesterday. I, let's just say before yesterday to be safe. <laughs> But, um, like a meet and greet kind of thing, like a listening party, right? And the songs that made me like, kind of like, because you know, you always have these, these songs that are a mixture of happy and sad and chill and upbeat at the same time, depending on what mood you're in. 
because they do like some kind of trick where you'd have like the contrast yep, between how the melodic phrasing is versus the actual beat itself. You or know, the, or, the tempo. It could be a you know a an, tempo an, an thing, upbeat, yeah. but you're depressed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the songs that people cried in. I mean, in the shows, usually p- people would cry. You know, you get in touch with the music, you get connected. It's live, but we were. It's not. It wasn't fully live. Like sure, I was singing along to the songs, but it was just playing the songs sure. off, off a speaker. And like listening it with everybody, and like it was really fun. I even went to like heard the different sides of the room and stuff nice. just to hear how the master is. But where was this? Fennec. Okay. In, in Saudi, in, yeah. in Jeddah, my hometown. And we did it totally for free. And even the venue was like down to do it for free. Okay, nice. It was all like for the love. <laughs> it was it was really yeah. nice. And um, I was surprised. Songs that brought me down to listen to. Like there's a song called Nobody Home. Yeah. It's not out yet. But it's like you if you go on my Instagram lives, you'll hear it. Like if you go scroll down and find Instagram look, look lives. Look for it. You you no, honestly, you'll you'll find it. You'll find it in like a bunch of other stuff uh, you, that you might like that will be on the album. But that's like that song, I can't listen to it myself. Just because of the emotions it brings up? Yes, it reminds me of when I got mugged in New York. It reminds me of when I lost a couple of friends to, you know. Mental illness, yeah. Allah it Allah reminds me of the worst points of my life when I was losing myself, when I was getting into vices I shouldn't have been, when I was losing my relationship with my mother. All this stuff is in this song, and it's called Nobody Home. It tells you a little bit what it's about. And I play it in the thing, and the people are freaking out. And I'm wondering, like, this is the song you guys and they even said they were requesting it on the thing it's not a, the song is not released and they're like play nobody at home play. first of all i'm like how do you know this song and they said oh instagram live instagram live right and then what's it called but and i was like are you sure it's kind of a sad song <laughs> you know what I mean? it's like someone filmed it this one on tiktok now but i'm basically saying like are you sure like are you sure what what's what the hell man but they were right and like as an artist, I don't know, that was eye-opening for me, I think, a little bit. It's rarely the song you think is going to do the, the way it does, right? So there's always the fan favorites, and there's the ones that... And I'm sure you oscillate between ones that you're like, this is kind of my jam right oh, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that <laughs> roller coaster. <laughs> it, you know, it's it's so, real, you know, connected to how you feel at the, at the moment, right? You know, so you might be going through something, then you play the song or hear it, and you're like, oh, okay. You know, and it takes you right back to where you were. That's true. So much of everything really is just perspective. Yeah, for sure. But that's that's a great thing. I mean, it's like everyone kind of brings, I don't want to say baggage, but they bring their emotions to whatever, you know, when they go to a live venue or listen to song. you know, you could be in the best of moods and it's the one song that takes you somewhere. You could be going through a breakup or, you know, you may have just recently lost someone. It's yeah. the power of, of music, you know, music and movies have a way of, of moving us in ways that very, you know, few things can do, you know. And they bring us together. Yeah, for sure. I, I love that communal aspect of it. Yeah. Also, the the I think it's like an it's an icebreaker from because music is emotion. Yeah, for sure. And you know, even if you're you're just playing an instrument and it's coming out of you know metallic strings connected to an electric amplifier, what you're playing, the pattern. That's the emotion. Yeah. It's it's language. Frequencies, the yeah. So it doesn't matter what the person looks like, where the person is from, what their name is, none of this. When you can understand how that person feels, because that is no language. But we can still communicate it through music. Like the universal language, sorry, but you, no, it you, is. You know, it's the most you know universal I mean? thing, yeah. Dude, this is what like like you know I'm from I'm from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Sorry. I want more people from Saudi Arabia to be Saudi Arabian music exports. This needs to happen because I, while outside, that was the big thing that I noticed. It did a lot. You're paving the way, buddy. But it should, but like, look, alhamdulillah, right? Great. And I, I think, like, I would have never expected to be in this position. I still don't believe it today. But what excites me about it is that I see it's working. I see, like, how people are reacting to it. I see, like, the reaction that comes. And I see how people look at where I'm from differently. Yeah. 
And here's the thing as well, an advertisement, you're only going to get it when you're using your phone watching something or when you're, you know, I don't know what, or, you know, you're dedicating your time to that thing, right? Because it's visual. Music is auditory. You can be cooking and you can be listening to music. And it's also not so in your face. It's not shoving down your throat. It's not telling you to do anything. It's not saying, hey, come here. It's, it's just builds, it offers a different perspective. It's, it's mostly non-threatening. Or, or just changing how, like helping change how people see us. Because, you know, it's, sure, now we have, uh, you know, Ronaldo in our country and all this stuff. Right? Benzema. Uh, how, when he came in, Benzema and everything. Neymar. That's great. Because that's like, okay, yeah, all that like helps and stuff. It, it, at the same time, it's not, they're not Saudi. It's a piece of a piece of a piece. It's a piece of a piece of a piece. Yeah. Where are the stars? You know, where, where are the Saudi actors that are, you know... Paving the way. Yeah. Paving the way that you're seeing, not only within the region. Yes, it's easy to make it within the region, speak Arabic, there's low competition, it's a good business, sure. But man, we have an image to show people. We have so much beauty to show the world. And how are we going to reach them? We have to go out there and actually reach them. We have to make stuff that can not only appeal here, but to That's anyone. Right. Yeah, yeah. This is like not what I wanted to do. I was going to say, was this intentional? No, thing? not at all. Walk me through how you got here. Okay. From the beginning? You picked the spot. I mean, you've chosen a path that for most, you, you know, A, is not attainable. B, is not easy. You know, there's a m million hurdles I'm sure you've, you've had to go through. But it seems to me like you're very deliberate about where you're trying to go. Obviously, it seems like you're open to, to, to the unknown and the, you know, nice little surprises. You have to be, I think. You know, but I'm, I'm interested to, to kind of know how it is that someone with your background ends up where, where he is today. I'd say for anybody who doesn't know why I got into music was because of a, an injury, a broken arm. This, oh, oh. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. Right there. No, it's hard not to look at <laughs> And um, my nerves are still damaged to this day. Not many people know this, but I can't use my left arm the same way that I use my right. But I can use it. And it's functional. And the reason why it's functional is because of the, the guitar. It was basically just physiotherapy. Based on a recommendation or? No, the doctor just gave me his damn guitar. And it was, <laughs> and he taught me E minor and C major, I couldn't play it for the life of me, but you know, I remembered the shapes of, of what sure. the fingers were. Yeah, and then like eventually started, like it started working a little so bit. So your motor skills were impacted even at the finger level, yeah? Yeah, it was gone. I couldn't even, when, when my arm, when I finished the surgery, it was literally, I couldn't even move it. Wow. It was just like this and my fingers were all puffed up and stuff, it was a mess. How long were you in that state? I don't remember, but it was a while. I was Month, sleeping. Months, I, I yeah, assuming, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was sleeping in the hospital. Even oh, well. stuff, yeah. I even have like this, like, uh, there was this dish they would, they would bring. And I forgot the name of the, it. It's a hospital in Jeddah. This, so they have, the, the accident happened in Jeddah? Yeah, in yeah. Jeddah, yeah. Okay. I was born and raised uh, in Jeddah. Why the sea actually in Uphar? That's, why the, that's exactly where the accident is. So technically not Jeddah, but Uphar, yeah. And... Uh, Man, they had really good fish, I'll tell you that. Like, the, I ended up having the same meal every day because I just loved it. It would even have it sometimes lunch and dinner, the same thing. I was like, I'd be like, oh, can I have the fish thing again? And they'd be like, sure, buddy. <laughs> here you go. And it's like there's a little rice and fish. I, I, I'm seeing a, a, a partnership opportunity here. <laughs> Some brand deal yeah, or something. Mishy fishy or something. Yeah. <laughs> mish, mish fish. Um, but yeah. That, uh, I started writing. I tried to learn covers first and I, I got so frustrated trying to learn covers that I was just like, you know, damn, I can't play these damn things. I'll just, just make my own goddamn song, right? That's like simpler and easier to play than I could do with my broken arm. Because the truth is I was into heavy metal and that's not something that you can, you know, cover on an acoustic guitar. Also, it's very technically impressive. Heavy metal is very, more so, I think, than, than it is melodically. The technique required for it's it. It's yeah. so, exactly. It's technically really impressive. And I'm a metalhead. I, I love that kind of stuff. But had, you, had you always been into metal? 
maybe since like the angst came in. <laughs> yeah. I think it kind of went from grunge into metal into more grunge into like, it's kind of like in between that. And then now I'm like kind of on Deftones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> but um, yeah, it forced me if I wanted to sound good. Because I couldn't do this technically impressive stuff. I couldn't do the flashy stuff. Had you sang before? I started singing. Not really. I was. I used to do a dan. Okay. And um, that was since I was really young. But I wanted to sound good. I wanted to make something that I can listen to, and like while I'm playing it and enjoy myself. I was not enjoying what I was listening to while I'm playing it. And you know what I came to realize as well. When I took the metal songs and I would slow it down, not all, some of them were absolutely gorgeous, but a lot of them lost something. And yeah, without the, without the technical, uh, you know, flashiness of it mm. and the bravado is just kind of, what's, there was something missing. Okay, what's missing? What makes a good melody? What makes something catchy? This is what I was thinking of when I was 10 years old. All I wanted to do was what makes a tune that will stick in your head. How to make that. I'm still trying to figure that out. It's I'm a, still it's a learning. Work, you'll never get there. I hope you never get there. Inshallah. So that way I can keep a little bit better. Carrot, but, carrot and the stick, man. You need both. But that's when I started writing. That's when I started writing. It wasn't even to express my feelings at first. It was a frustration and curiosity with melody. That's it. Always in English, or was there ever a time? Started in Arabic, actually. Okay. Yeah. And then ironically, I ended up losing my Arabic because I left when I was 15. You went to? Jordan. Jordan, okay. Yeah. And Jordan people speak Arabic. But I don't know if it was just like my group of friends or the environment I was in and myself not allowing myself to speak Arabic as much as I could have. Even when I went back home, I would just was speak Was your schooling in Arabic or English at that time? That was English. English, okay. The so one when I left when I was 15, it was yeah. all English. Okay, yeah. so that, that's a big, a big part of it, yeah. Exactly. There was one Arabic class and it was like ridiculous. It was <laughs> Fusha. <laughs> yeah, not, not even Fusha. Well, yeah, it was of course all in Fusha, but like, it, you know, the really lower level Arabic that, you know, and I was writing essays before I left. It's like, what are you, what are you doing now? You know, like you're writing sentences and saying, oh yeah, this, this and that. And, you know, it's an easy grade and you're a teenager and you're thinking, oh my God, yeah, it's an easy grade. Great. I used to, yeah, great. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> now, I, now I'm trying to get back my Arabic. So. But um, started writing. When I went to that school, actually, there was no music. And I wanted to be a musician then. From that point, I would dream about it every night. I would have this dream where... I would have these two dreams, actually. But the first one was this one, where it was essentially just being on stage. It was so simple. It's your calling, man. I, it's weird, you know? Isn't it funny how life is? <laughs> L listen, it'll get you any way it can. <laughs> if it had to... I mean, not to make light of the accident, but maybe that was your, you know your vehicle into where you are today? It absolutely was. Mm -hmm. I would have not come to it alone. And, and the best part about it is you, you've accepted the knock. Like, you know, someone's knocking at the door and you answered the door and you're here today. Yeah. I think that's probably one of the most beautiful things someone can do. And I don't necessarily believe in luck, but I feel like one of the best things that could have happened to you is you know what you like, you know what moves the needle for you. That's, that's super important. You know, I, I happen to share that. Never really had to struggle to know what I'm into, you know. Um, I see a lot of people kind of get lost in, you know, trying to figure out what they want to do in life. For, for me, and I, I'm assuming for you as well, you know, you didn't have to do a lot of digging. That's, alhamdulillah. Actually, yeah? yeah, it's a blessing. Because a lot of people struggle with that. Like not knowing what to do. A lot of my friends, yeah. like especially like going into uni and stuff and, Man, like the internet. That's a whole nother world, man, the internet. Dude, do you see the stuff that they put up there? If you don't have a house by 25, I don't yeah. know. Like, Retire it's, early. It's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. And it, it just creates such a... It's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. It creates this mindless race instead of just enjoying your already short enough life. Why do you want to race it? <laughs> right? 
it's fucking short enough already. But you know, that's how they prey on people. It's, you know, it's that scarcity, like do it now or else you're not as good as everybody else. It's, yeah. it's that hustle culture. Go, go, go. You know, it, it's literally not. So we got into writing. I'm interested to know what music you were listening to at the time that kind of informed, not to say that you wanted to sound like somebody else, but what was doing it for you at, at that time? I can tell you. Okay. Oh yeah. So, oh, Michael Jackson. Love that. Tupac Shakur. Love that. 50 Cent. Okay. Um, Andrea Bocelli. Abdul Halim Al Hafiz. Okay. Um Kalthum, of course. Very Fayouz, diverse. of course. Yeah. Muhammad Abdul and uh, Shakira. <laughs> it was a very of course, because why not, right? <laughs> Pink Floyd. Okay. Metallica. Guilty pleasure, bullet for my Valentine. And uh, also got into like a few of these bands, like, you know, Hinder and stuff like that, but I never, only two, three songs always, right? But there was a lot of those kinds of bands, right? Where they would have like one huge hit and I would hear that one huge hit. But that would be... Now that I think of it, actually, that's besides Michael Jackson and Pink Floyd and Metallica, like those three, maybe 50 Cent as well, or Eminem, I wouldn't listen to any specific artist consistently. It would be consistently. song driven more so than artist driven. 100%. Yeah. I don't know if it's just like, I, 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 the first time I heard a full album was 2016. Me, someone who's like, you're supposed to be a musician, supposed to be like all like, it's 2016, man. It, I was it's like, normal, man. It's normal. I used to beat myself up over that. I used to feel like my interest in music was kind of shallow, but man, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah, matter. Man. Like, doesn't matter. you know, I always gravitated towards commercial and hip music, you know. I resisted it for a second in terms of, or, you know, others were like, oh, that's so shallow. Whatever. I'm like, that's fine. I'm good with that. I really like what you like. Yeah. Simple as yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And of course, like, Oh, dude, speaking of we like what we like, telling my parents that I wanted to be a musician when I was like 14, 15 was a joke. Are you an only child? I'm the middle child okay. of three brothers, you know, okay. poor mom, all, all boys in the house, <laughs> a lot of testosterone. <laughs> but, um, dude, it, it became like a running joke. At first, like, it was like, you're going to be a clown, all right? I'd say, oh, I want to be a musician. Like, what does Furuk want to be? He wants to get into... You know, finance or something. What does my little brother want to be? Let's get into swimming or, or also business and some sort. Mesh, hi, what do you want to be? I want to be a musician. I've always been like a good kid per se. But when it came to music, I always broke the rules. Or I wouldn't break them necessarily. I would flip them upside down. Take them to the edge, right? No, I think literally flip them upside down. So he said no music, no, 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 no like this. You have to go to school. You have to be a good student and uh, what's it called? You know, stuff that will get you to a good university. So I have to think, fuck, man, how am I going to do something like this? Is gonna, like, I'm trying to think how can I, like, instead of, you know, bending the rules, like, just, like, flip it in a way that serves my advantage. So what can I do? Okay. There is no music program in the school. Especially not for the kind of music that I want to be making. Let me see if there are any other kids here that want to be making the same thing. So go look around. Turns out there are. Now, haha, number two. <laughs> a little Einstein in Literally, man, I'm a total nerd, by the way, in case you didn't realize. Like, most people have no idea, but uh, you should have seen also, I'll show you pictures maybe from my high school yeah, and stuff. I'd love to. Big glasses, braces, every, the whole nine yards. I even had the headgear thing, everything. I love it. Like uh, uh, Megamind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Plotting. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I rounded them up together and started figuring out a way, you know, talking to some people in the school. And I was a new kid. I was just came, I was like, you know, just turned 15. But I really wanted to do this because I was not going to, like, I needed an instrument around. I didn't have a guitar. I didn't have, it was all in jitta. No piano. And I see that they can do this. And I see that they have stores here. And it's easier to get instruments in Jordan than it is to get them in Saudi. Mm. Were you in Amman? At the I was in, yeah, outside Amman, in Madaba. Okay. Uh, like a little bit like it's yeah closer to my other okay, gotcha. yeah, I was like on the outskirts a little bit but um, it worked spoke to the right people in the school 
put it all together. I knew this is going to help me technically I'm just doing what my parents want because it's going gonna, it's gonna to help my resume for going to college. Oh, he started the program school or whatever. It helps, right? And the program did well. Like it went from doing like, it started with, you know, normal com- contemporary music and then it, you know, segued from that into jazz. And then like, but before it went into jazz, it went into this sort of like pop indie music phase. And then from there it went into funk. And then from there it went to jazz. And that was really cool. And then after jazz, we had like a little disco moment and there was metal and stuff. It was, it was fun. Pretty diverse. Pretty diverse and fun. And Cause you had anybody come be able to make whatever you like. And I think that's what music should be about, especially when we're not, because none of us are from the West and most of the music we're hearing is from the West. So when we make these songs, you naturally bring in yourself to yeah, Of it. course. You're yes. not, you know, you're not like, how do you say? You're, ma- you, you're unwittingly making something new that you don't even realize. Because the reality is it doesn't sound like normal fuck. It doesn't sound like normal disco. It doesn't sound like normal metal. And it doesn't sound like normal pop. It's infused with all your experiences. and It's infused with all your experiences, with who you are, what you've heard. And I'm curious to know what people have been listening to here, especially in a place where, you know, music was taboo and in some ways still is. It makes me wonder if someone's listening to music and like really enjoys it to that point and must be some good shit, (laughs) you know? And I found that when I ask people what they like here, they've got taste. They've got great fucking taste. So, and I think taste is all that matters when you're making music. Yeah, for sure. There's nothing more important than taste. It's like a chef. What, What does it matter if you can be the most technically efficient chef in the world if you you don't know if it tastes good or not. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know. Like, and, and tastes vary. And a, the, the good thing about it is there's no one right taste. Sorry. What you perceive as too sweet might be just right for someone. And That's true. You know? That's very true, actually. I've noticed that, like, yeah, like in the States, they put so much sugar in everything, for example. Yeah. But I don't know if I 100% agree with that, actually. What part? About um, art being subjective. You don't agree that it's subjective? Not fully. I think there is such thing as an objective, maybe not just, not art. Art is not the right word for it because art is subjective because art literally can be anything. But beauty, I think created beauty, not like how people come out and stuff. I mean, literally like a a pretty word, a word just like or a sentence that flows together nicely with the right amount of syllables and the right amount of, you know, differences between, like distance between the, phrasing. the notes. I agree with, with your point in that there's things that flow in a certain way. There's things that feel forced. But I think the art is in making something that would have traditionally been perceived as forced. If you can, like for instance, mm. when Eminem happened, yeah. Eminem brought something new to the table. His rhyming patterns p- patterns are completely unorthodox. You know what I'm saying? But he has so many reps, and he's so good at what he does. You're like, I think he even said one time, nothing rhymes with orange. But like with orange, you know. So he made it work, but he made it work in a, in, in a beautiful way. To your point, you know what I mean? Like he found that that. Because there is a that. Yes. There's a reason why not I, every song becomes a hit, or you know. Why there's this, damn, that's like, you know, treasure hunting. Yeah. But that's the beauty of it, right? That is the beauty of it. And, and, and if we had the answer, I think it'd be game over. I mean, the, the, it's that endless chase yeah. of not knowing how you're going to get there. Yeah. And like we, we mentioned Max Martin, we mentioned Max Martin before. Yep. I think he's pretty close, but. He's about as close as it gets. As close as it gets right now, I think. He really is brilliant. He's yeah. brilliant. And, and his whole, what I love about him is he also brings up his understudies and he relies on, I mean, obviously he brings something to the table that very few people can bring, but he's very keen on kind of paying it forward because his mentor, Dennis Pop, did that for him, right? Really? Dennis Pop showed him the way. So he had no interest in producing. He was just doing his thing. And then Dennis Pop, his mentor brought him in and show, showed him the ropes and, you know, he learned the process from Dennis Pop. So what Max has done since with a producer named Rami, I don't know if you're familiar with him, uh, Rami and, and uh, 
um, Carl Falk uh, did all the One Direction stuff. No way. So Rami, Rami was... Max- He's Arab? Yeah. Let's go! Uh, uh, yes. Rami was, was Max Martin's understudy before Shellbeck. I'm assuming you know who Shellbeck is. Shellbeck. Shellbeck and Max Martin did all of the Taylor Swift hits. Oh my God. Like the 1986 album? The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, I Knew You Were Trouble. That's all Shellbeck and, and Max Martin. Wow. There's a whole collective of people uh, named the, the Wolf Cousins. And it's like a whole crew. It's it's a whole system. But, you know. Dude, I had no idea you were so into this. Oh, it's it's my jam, man. It's my jam and a half. So. Hell yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I'm glad you're getting back into producing, bro. Me too. Me too. Uh, it's been a long time. And, you know, when the time is right, the time is right. You know, and, and again, we go back to that calling, man. It's what I love most about what you're doing. You know, I want to bring it back to you is that you found your calling and you're answering uh, profusely with, with tenacity. And that's what it takes, you know. And, and I think you're at the right age doing the right things. The right time. The, the right time representing from the right geography. I mean, the stars are aligning and, and you know, I think the... The world is your oyster, as, as they say. So how do we go from Jordan to then the U.S.? Oh, my God. So sorry. Yes. No, it's all good. It's all good. Bro, this is stream of consciousness. You know, we're flowing. It's only going to give the editor a hard time. That, that would be me. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Um, um, You're okay talking about this? Yeah, yeah, no, okay. no, of course. Yeah, And like... So I was still doing the joke with my dad. It wasn't a joke, but it was technically a joke at this point. What do you want to be, a musician? Yeah. Blah, blah. <laughs> you can be a clown. <laughs> you, you were clowning around still. Yeah, clowning around. But yeah, literally clowning around. That's in a song. Yeah. yeah, I've been clowning around, living in a circus filled with so much doubt. Well, look at you, man. Look at you channeling. <laughs> no, it's literally it. The, the lyrics, it's alt- yeah, I was like, yeah, he loves that song. It's Altoids. It's like... I'm looking for my purpose. Dun, 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 dun. I've been clowning around, dun, dun, dun. living in a circus filled with so much doubt. Because that's what it is. Yeah. It's doubt. But, um, you know, <laughs> F anxiety, how we say in the chicken gang. So F the doubt. I decided to just go for it anyway. I applied behind my parents' back. Yep. To, uh, Is that the Clive Davis thing? The Clive Davis, the 4% acceptance rate. It was a Hail Mary. No way am I thinking on planet Earth am I ever going to get accepted to the school. I mean, this is about as, as prestigious as it gets. Clive Davis is one of the biggest record executives in the world, in the history. I mean... Yeah. And this school now is the is it the top one now. Above, like, Berkeley and all the other... It's crazy. And it, to me... I didn't think it was going to happen. Other than because of where you were applying from, why did you think it was going to Multiple reasons. I'm not doing music. I'm doing computer science. I have nothing to show for my music. I can't even read notes. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, and, and also, I have no songs that are out. Nothing. So, damn, what the hell am I going to do? What did you apply with? <laughs> I made songs. I made, yeah, seriously, yeah. I didn't even have a DAW. I, but I knew computer science. Did you program? Yeah. You did? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It had three tracks. Could support three tracks at once. If you know what you're doing, that's all you need. I didn't. It would crash after more than three tracks. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. الحاجة أم الاختراع, right? Yeah. Bistarif. First song that I made from that, it's called uh, The Ranging Sandman. Okay. I'm going to put it in this for you guys to know, by the way, you're not, this is not in vain. Home is changing is going to have an extended edition drop with it. Okay. Which, cause there's a, there's a story that goes along with this. That should H- be Home told. is changing is Michelle's upcoming album. Do we have a date for it yet? Oh, uh, no, we don't. Okay. But well, here's the thing. This it, year, next year, within a year, both. let's just say. Okay. All right. That's be- good. Because it's going to be spread out. Okay. Like it's going to be like five EPs chapters. Okay. Leading up to the grand. The grand album, which is all of them together. And then you see the story because each chapter is a story. But how did we get there? That's why the extended edition, where it's just kind of like a prequel, you know, and it's going to have songs like Mr. Sadman, which is, and it's even have even songs made in 2016. And you'll hear like voice memos, stuff like that. For your hardcore fans, this, hard- is, go- this is gold, man. Yeah, man. This is a, it's a thank you. It's a, even the last song on the album, on both, even extended edition, I made sure that's the last track on it. It's a song called TYSM. Which is short for? Thank you so much. Gotcha. 
And it's literally like in the lyrics for it, it's talking directly to the fans. Like, thank you so much for all of the love, all of the patience, all of the trust. Like, literally, like, I'm not going to spoil it because there's some really nice lyrics in there that come after. But it's basically saying, I, I, I've been keeping you waiting for so damn long. You know, especially the hardcore fans. It's like a few, but strong. And like, you guys really have been supporting me through this so long of a time and so powerfully, you know, so passionately. That, you know, this, I want to give you everything, not just some part. You know, I want to give them literally everything. And that includes my past, my history, my origins. So, yeah, that's what the song. Even it's like, it was like, what well, these hands are mine. This face is mine. These, this mouth is mine. And my words are all mine. But I'm all yours forever, baby. If you love me still, will you love me still? Like, it's like basically saying, and now I'm all yours forever, baby. That's the songs. That's talking about the songs are out there. All yours forever. As long as you like them, as long as you want. Not keeping them back anymore. That's amazing. And uh, it was actually Mo Show, the other podcast from back home in Saudi, shout out. He could, he could, he like, there was a talk and he got mad at me even on the podcast because it was showing him some songs. He's like, put this out, put it out. And he's right. And for anyone else out there who, you know, dude, you're going to like your song one day. You're going to hate it the other day. You're the artist. You're the most insecure creature on the planet. And it's part of the plan. It, that, that's where the creative juice comes from. Ah. That insecurity, man, it's so important. And I found that even at the top of the game, insert biggest artists ever. They all have insecurities. But that's that's the juice. If you lean into it, man, that's where the good stuff is. Yeah. I, I wrote a song um, after the show the other day. I went to the studio. And I was feeling insecure that I can't make a song that day because I was just like, stuck. I think it might be the best song I've ever written in my life. And we recorded, produced it, everything the same, like just like a few hours. And I have it here. I was working on it actually before I came yeah. on my laptop. But dude, I think it actually might be the best song I've ever made. And I was doing it when I was... I, you know, it's like when you turn your brain off, but your mind's still on. Yep. That's when we make the best music. And um, I have so many insertables about that. Y you've heard the saying, showing up is half the battle. Have you heard that before? No, they, but they, they I say agree. <laughs> I have a remake to that. Showing up is the battle. Wow. I also agree. Social anxiety for me is what I'm first saying. Thing showing up is the battle. The greats, they'll tell you. You know, when the Michael Jacksons, it's when it comes down, you have to get out of the way of the music. You try to ruin what, what is already perfectly divine. You're just the receiver, you're the antenna. It's saying it has to happen through you, right? So what I mean by showing up, once you're there, you've accepted the challenge. And then it, it has the, the, the space and the room to come through you, which I think, you know, to your point. You're a hundred percent. I don't, I didn't understand what you meant until when you explained it. And now I know you're a hundred percent right about this. You know, something I told like some friends of mine before was, yes, I technically I'm writing everywhere i don't think i wrote a song in my life that's the part that's hard to explain to those who don't know what it's like exactly to, but to, you're right. you know what i mean you know exactly what i mean because what you said you know exactly what i'm talking about it's not us it's god it's uh, i don't know what it's not us though. and that's why i was saying the showing up whether it's sitting in front of your instrument your piano your guitar whatever you're saying i have made a choice i am here to receive yeah. It might not happen now. It might ha not happen at, on the next session. But that, again, the reps of showing up with the intent, yeah, you know, to let that message come through you. Once it clicks, man. And, and, and I, too, was, you know, didn't think of it that way until serendipity plays a, a big role in this. You know, some of the best songs I've written happened when I wasn't planning. You know, they happen quick. Mm -hmm. And I've heard many accounts, you know, again, from the greats talking about that until it clicks right when it clicks you're like okay i get it and mind you it's not something you can do on command but that's where the max martins of the world 
the one thing they have in common is they show up. You yes. know what I mean? So it's like, okay, it's a nine to five. That's my window. It's going to come during that time. And then how well it does, how big it becomes, who, you know, what artists it lands Just with. Keep showing up. Exactly. You know, yeah. I mean, not to make it sound overly simplistic, but that's, that's the biggest thing. It, it always know? is though, isn't yeah. it? Isn't it always? Simplistic and simple are two different things. Simple is probably one of the hardest things to do. Simple. <laughs> People think yeah. simple is easy. Simple is not easy. Yeah. That's where taste comes in. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad you're, you've managed to not crack, but experience that magic, right? That's amazing, man. I'm, it, it excites me. And, and you know, so to, to kind of loop back to the Clive Davis. Oh, yes. So about the songs that you submitted that got you. Yeah. So I made a few songs on my laptop and with like an Xbox mic. <laughs> I love it. It's still the same mic that I used when I went to university in, in the dorms. Despite having a studio there that was like available, kind of. But... Anyway, so I applied to the thing thinking, you know, it's a Hail Mary. No, it's not going to happen. And then I applied also to the computer science schools. And I got into both. But alhamdulillah. Decision time. Da, da, da. Oh, no. I, uh, I didn't tell my parents about the computer science okay. acceptance. But I did say NYU. Okay. And which is a half truth. Which is a half truth. And... Uh, they agreed, but I had to do something more as well. So I ended up doing like, because they, they were like, dude, like, come on, really? You're like, really, Mish? Like, <laughs> this is ridiculous, you know? It's, but hey, you know. So how, I, how, I, how shocked were you when, when you got accepted? I didn't believe it. You think someone's punk, punking you? Or like no, I, I didn't believe it. And I was also like scared because I knew I'm going to get in trouble. And, yeah. I, and I did. I had to do a triple major. I had to do engineering. Wow. Business, entrepreneurship with it, and uh, music. How, how long was the program, the Club Davis thing? Gee, fucking long. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was four years. It's a oh, four, it's a four-year program. It's a four-year program. Wow. And, and you went through the entire thing? No. Okay. So this is where the story gets interesting. I'm in the shower one day in the dorms, and I'm just like sitting there, not standing, sitting there. In the shower. Yeah. And this melody pops up in my head. With the words. Complete. You're like. <laughs> and it was. Yeah. Of that song. That was the only. Melody, that was the only thing. That, that, that came out. Of it. it was. It was almost like a. Come on. Yep. So it was just. Like. Girl how I love you. I can't love myself. Each day I wake. I wish I'm someone else. It's exactly what I was feeling. So. I got out of the shower. Before. Finishing. And. Um just sat down in my chair the lights were all off i was like half naked mm -hmm. down, but i put a little hoodie on so put the little phone camera record my first video of myself you went straight to video at this point yeah it was dark you yeah, can see yeah. you can see my face yeah i click it record sing the little tune in falsetto so my roommates don't hear me and look at you being all mindful and, and cognizant of your buddies it was more insecurity. Okay. <laughs> I'll take, I'll take both. Hear I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> but yeah, if they look at that as kindness, great on me. That, but nah, if I'm being honest, it was just insecure. And that's what made the falsetto voice. But everything happens for a reason. The beauty of that, man, like the falsetto and insecurity, because, you know, if you don't sing a ton in your falsetto, it's really weak. And, you know, you get a lot of bumps in the, you know. Yeah. So, but, but it fits the, man, it's like, it's as if it was meant to be. Not just that, I got super lucky as well that I was singing in falsetto. Because I made the melody at first not in falsetto. But then I sang it in falsetto because I was shy. Who did it end? So I uploaded. It. it sounds like, what's happening as well? This is 2017, December 2017. What's happening December 2017? XXX Tentacion has just released the album with the samples of Shadow Dynasty. These songs now are exploding. And people are attracted to familiarity. Yeah, of course. The falsetto that I was singing sound and the, with the guitar and the shitty audio quality of the video it struck a chord it struck a chord because it was exactly the same as like what shadow dynasty would sound like well not exactly but like but very in that similar same enough yeah. Yeah. yeah and so it exploded and that song that it's my first instagram if you go on if you go on my insta yeah go to the instagram 
scroll all the way to the very bottom and you'll find it. It's the same video, but you can issue, you see that, and then you go on Spotify. And it's now the number one thing. Wow. It's a 93 million streams. And it's just that fucking little loop. It's 10 second loop. So it's that rawness. It's that honesty that came down. And I think it was also, like, I think on this journey, we have signs. And we just have to see them. And that opens up a whole can of worms here because, you know, learning how to read signs, because anything can be or is a sign, but it also, it depends on the beholder, right? So if you don't believe in signs, the signs might be there, but if you don't read them, are they there? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So that interests me and it piques my interest. When did you recognize them as, as signs and how are you with being better at reading these signs? I think I got to, I've always been like into this sort of Tuned thing. in, let's just call it, yeah. Yeah, yeah into this sort of thing. <laughs> and it's funny because I'm also very skeptical. Like my mom is really into these, you know, gurus. Hi mama. I know <laughs> And my God, full, it, full blast. it drives me nuts, man. It drives me nuts because I know they're just playing her. They're just, you know, it's, a lot of them are scams and stuff. But this sign business, I don't know, man, because nothing in my life happened the way I expected it to. Nothing. And these signs when I would look at them, sometimes I would even obsess over them. And like, then I would even look for them. And I even got into this weird phase where I was like. A dry spell. No, uh, no, just like looking, I would look at numbers and be like, oh, that's a sign. That's a sign. Everywhere is a sign. And, and that's why I'm saying, that's why I asked the question because it can, it can be you exhausting. You can fall yeah, into yeah, that. And yeah. it is exhausting. It's exhausting. It's actually why, wallahi, the song, I was like so sick of stopping for signs. You know, yeah. it's, it's a lyric in the song. I, I love that you're channeling all that stuff in your music. It's amazing. Bro, it's my outlet. It's, it's, it's literally, your my, therapy. It's yeah, literally yeah. my therapy. Like, you know, I don't think people realize just how literal the songs are. Yeah. It's not like. But th but I also think that's what makes them super personable because. Yeah, because they, they relate. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. They connect. And, and you don't you feel like expect... you're trying to like, okay, we're going to fit this word here and, you know. No, it, no. It, it, it's not. It's I've not... seen people write like that and yeah. I don't think it. I don't think it's real writing. I don't think you're really writing songs. You just. It's formulaic. It's like it's school a... or something. Yeah, yeah, it's formulaic. It's like school. It's like, okay, but then it will sound good and it, will, it might even feel really good. Yeah. But who's it going to touch? It'll touch a few, but, you know, it, it, it's, got a, it's got a shelf life yeah. of a different kind, yeah. I mean, it's always with those great songs that you hear about, like, I'm, like even like the Otis Redding, the one, you know, sitting on the dock of a bay, that these songs are always real, even when it's not the singer who wrote them. If you look at the story behind them, like even Thriller from Michael Jackson. yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, you know, Billie Jean or... Careless Whisper. Careless Whisper. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. You know, like... That's... And alhamdulillah, this exists. And that human beings can have something as a way to express our feelings. Whether it's like painting, music, whatever. It's, it's, it's real and it doesn't, and, and if you're, the more vulnerable, the more honest you are about it with yourself, even if it's something so simple that like you think no one is going to get but you. And I'm, I'm not the only one to say this either. Like a lot of people. Have said it, it's this. proven. It's that. true. Yeah, yeah. It's true. That is what connects Because that can't, that won't only help you. That will help others because at the end of the day, we're all human. And in some way, shape or form going through the same thing <laughs> so, so so this song your falsetto oh yeah uh serendipity puts you on, on on the map in in ways you could have never imagined i assume yes so so what happens from that point in terms of from that point like two weeks later i see a 10 minute loop of it on youtube and i'm like oh interesting and i didn't search up for it it popped up on my on my yeah. thing because i was listening to like a lot of lo-fi at the time as well and then i was like okay damn dude like is actually working you know like 
But why? And say, you don't tell me. Ten seconds. Then go listen to something else. Go listen to something better. But people. Then a couple weeks later, a, a Russian guy it was like a Russian rapper. Uploads a video sampling it, and he puts featuring Mishad. I didn't even have a username for my account at the time. It was just user one two three whatever something like that. And I was freaking out. I was shy. I was like, thinking like, oh no, what did I put myself into? How far along were you in your Clive Davis uh, program at that point? S- semester one, yeah. and um, I tried to um, like take down the video. Like I archived it and stuff, but impossible because it was. A... And then I thought to myself, no, this is good. This is a good thing. This is this is what you wanted when you uploaded the video. And now it's happening, and now you don't want it. What, what do you want? Make up your mind. Make up your goddamn mind. Dude, make up your mind. Literally. Ugh, dealing with myself is such a headache. <laughs> but, but it's, you know, we all got to do it. We all got to deal with ourselves. <laughs> but, yeah. It worked out, and then... Uh, I made Papa Misha, my Discord account. And this created like a little community of people that, because I would I'll put more of these videos out and like people would listen to them and stuff and they'd be like, go to a studio, Mish, or like record, make a full song, make a full song. And then um, these other producers would find me from World of Warcraft or from, you know, <laughs> like For Honor and stuff yeah. like that. Like, please play. And then play games with them. And after, while we'd play, they would show me like beats and stuff. Like just over Discord, and then I started writing over those, and those became the songs like "Addicted," "Kid Goku," uh, "Frostron," "So Fine," and it's funny. "So Fine" actually, the knock of destiny is in "So Fine." There's actually a track on it. It's called "The Knock of Destiny," okay. and that reminded me when you said it's funny. Like you literally were like, "Oh, yeah. it's, it came knocking," and it's true. That's like what um, I don't know if you, if you hear this and you're like a super fan or something. I highly recommend going down to. And check out the lyrics specifically for So Fine. And and Runaway. But the OG Runaway, not the not the remix with Beowulf. Even though I love Beowulf. Sorry, that's like all another good, thing. Man, but I think man, just be you, speak, speak your truth. Buddy. Because that's literally that that's based on what we were talking about. If you hear the song and you, and you like you, like even the lyrics of it and stuff, it's like pillars in my mind, they fall. I wish I never worried that at all. It's like pillars in my mind are the five pillars of Islam. Mm. And it's all about like, and then it's like, oh, barely do I talk. And now I now I just sit in silence and then it all goes silence. Like, but can I call that silence? Mm. I can't call that silence. I can't call that silence. And then the door is knocking because it's what's it saying? It's saying, don't shut the fuck up. You have something to give. Yep. And there's a door knocking. Go answer. The message is loud with you. It's clear that something is knocking at your door and has been knocking at your door. But what you've consistently done well is you've answered the call, which is great. But keep trying, man. Keep doing whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing. Don't, don't, um, don't spin your wheels too much tr- trying to question it and just go with it, man. I think that's, that served you well. So far, and I think it will continue to. Dan, that's really good advice. Overthinking is such a it's paralyzing I mean, poison. You, you've probably heard this a million times. It's not how many times you fall down. It's how many times you get up. Keep getting up. But you're doing great. I love that. And I kind of want to segue most recently, opening for One Republic. Yeah. Opening for... <laughs> <Spiral. laughs> how did we get here? I know, right? How, how did we get <laughs> that here? that insane... Isn't that crazy? Imagine Discord, dragons in Saudi Arabia. Xbox I mean, it, microphone. And then all of, all of a sudden, no, not all of a sudden, that was like five years, but still. Ah, I don't know, man. It's Kudos, man. This, is, this is huge. Huge. Yeah. I'm very honored, of course. I mean, not only do I get to represent, like the first time someone from my country doing this in this way, specifically, to not only, you know, it's not a touring Arab act. This is a touring international act. This is music that's not only appealing to the Middle East. This is music that is, it's no one target. It's everybody. It's global, yeah. It's global. We've never had that before. And uh, I never thought I would be the one to do that. 
but I can sure tell you that I'll be doing my goddamn best. But take it as a badge of honor, man. I, again, I'll go back and say, I, I don't believe in luck. You've been chosen, bro. You have been chosen. I mean, I'm sure you realize how privileged you are to have that opportunity, right? Oh, yeah. Make the most of it, man. That's exactly, that's it, yeah. That, because it, it's true. It's very, um, very unlikely. Very unlikely. Like, it had to, for this to be possible at all, even, I mean, forget me being from Saudi Arabia, for any artist for this to be possible at all is very difficult. And then add on to that with everything that, like, if I had different parents, I would have never written a song in my life. This is, for, for me, especially such a huge thing. Because a lot of my fans, my biggest fan ever, I won't say his name. I'll use, oh, actually, even that his name, his gamer name, I won't even say, actually. But I'll just say, let's just say, oh. A person. A, a person, <laughs> right? Let's say. But that's not to say he doesn't appreciate you. It's just that. Nah, bro, you know I love you, man. He comes to every single show. He comes to every single show. He's always front row. He's always screaming his lungs out. And like, dude. Khalas, he knows who he is. He, he, he knows you who you is. know who you are, dude. You know exactly who you are. Yeah. <laughs> Even Musab knows who he is. Dude, he's a legend. That's exactly, by the way, if you come to the shows, that's exactly the kind of energy that you want to be bringing. You want to like leave whatever insecurities you have out the door. Don't bring that into the concert with you. You're supposed to be totally free. Free like me up on that stage. Free. Don't care about anything, anyone, any blah, blah, blah. What I say? Nothing. Your mind free your brain free your heart free open and just experience the music feel every beat feel every note you can't do that when your brain is thinking oh my god how did i look oh my god let me fix my hair oh my god i don't know what people think about i i what i personally think about is like what, what do i do with my arms what do i do with my legs this is awkward <laughs> this is awkward that's stupid too you know <laughs> like we shouldn't be doing any of that because when you're doing that you're stopping yourself from really listening and from really you know, like going forth and feeling it. Because when you feel it and you, ha and you see it, and you can see even in a lot of the videos, like we, we try to like post as much from those kinds of moments. There's nothing like it in the world. It's so therapeutic for everybody. It's like a, it's like a group therapy thing, but at the same time, it's really fun. And at the same time, it's, I just never felt more free in my life than doing that, honestly. And like, I would love for you guys to feel that too. So that's that's why I'm saying this. Also, it makes a kick-ass show. It just makes the show a million times better. Because it's a better experience for everybody. I, I lost track of thoughts. It's Sorry. all good. We were talking about how we ended up at opening for One Republic and oh, yes. Imagine Dragons. Yeah, yeah. So, luck and uh, persistence, I think. So... And, and luck is essentially just being prepared for when the time comes so that you're not like, oh, no, I wish I, because I've been there where you have like the, oh, no, I wish I did that. Then that's when I learned what luck it really is. Preparation and opportunity. Preparation, yeah. because luck is nothing without preparation. You have to get your foot out there. You can't wait for things to happen. They will never happen. And you can't wait for the right time because there is no right time. And that's something I had to learn. Especially with dropping music, you know, you always think this song is such a hit, it deserves. No, it doesn't. Put it out. So it was a music video I was doing for Disco Cowboy. And uh, there was a guy there, the same guy who, Drew Chaffee. Shout out Drew Chaffee. He's incredible from Space Bar. And he was the guy who was essentially helping me with, you know, getting a band together, rehearsals together for when I did my first shows, which were back here. Uh, sorry, back home in Saudi. Like the Middle Beast one. That was my first time performing ever. Really? Yeah. Middle Beast 2021. I've never performed in my life before that. I was horrified. A week before the performance, my mom even came to me and was like, Mish. Uh, you sure you want to do this? Are you, yeah. Are you sure you, <laughs> not even that, are you sure you have it in you? That's what, my mom. Even mom's not supposed to tell you that. But you're supposed to say, you got it, you're going to kill it. You're gonna no, no, but it's okay. I'm glad you told me that because, yeah. uh, I don't know, I'm very shy, man. Like, you saw even me when I came in here. Now. I'm so awkward, bro. Like, you're not, you're not. <laughs> you're not, you're not. You're, not. you're just I you, man. I appreciate that. But yeah, I'm shy, definitely. Like, I'm quiet or definitely introverted. But, 
I don't know that that first show that freedom that I was talking about something just clicks yeah something like a switch and like there's always even in the one like in the one republic one like on tour it was always the same thing I'd be like super nervous before the show up to the very last second and then I go onto the crowd and um that's when the nerves are kind of at their height when I'm walking I see the so many people and I'm just like oh my god I already get like nervous from my zoom it's so like, <laughs> it's like another level trial by fire though yeah literally trial by fire and I think okay I have 30 minutes is that how long your set is yeah that was for the tour yes that's what that was my set it was an opening set for 30 minutes was it just you and in, in yeah, Republic yeah, yeah. And, no there was also Tom Gregory as okay, well okay we became friends with he's a really cool guy nice. and Shout out Tom Gregory, Habibi. <laughs> it was uh, yeah, amazing music too. Check, check it out. But, um, and he was huge in Germany. A lot of the tour was in, is in, was in Germany. And like, what's it called? It's crazy too how different territories have yeah. like yeah. stuff that's like, whoa, you know, like it's like, what? It's so random. And he's from England and he's more popular in Germany than he is in London. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird how these things work. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, Drew Shafi comes to the music video while we're shooting it, and he's on the phone with someone from One Republic. He was on the phone with the producer Brent from One Republic. Brent hears the song "Disco Cowboy" over the phone, and then they start talking. But then Drew sends him a couple other things, and Brent is the producer, so like he's like super into music and especially writing. And he's just like, "Oh, okay, this kid, he's the one doing this." He's like, "Yeah." He's the one doing it. Where's he from? From Saudi. It's a bit, it's a bit like a, shocked, right? So they're like, okay, we want to meet him. We want to know who this guy is. So we meet, and then they hear the song Cigarette. They really liked Cigarette. Was Ryan involved in any of this at this point? Yeah, yeah. he was, yeah. We actually, that, we met in his house. Yeah, okay. he, he had a house. Uh, in Ryan. Santa Monica or Colorado? No, and uh, bro, where was the, it was like, in LA, it was yeah, in LA, but not his house where he sleeps in. He got, he just recently got this house and it, it's like a studio. To, and the day before Madonna was there and the day before that, Sam Smith was there. And then we came the third day. Yeah, Ryan Tedder is kind of a big deal. <laughs> Dude, he is like my idol. Man. He's amazing. And, and he, here's the thing, like, I remember when I was like seven, I would, I would be watching it was my first music video that i ever watched apologize yeah <laughs> apologize with timberland uh, doing the thing the remix of it <laughs> it's so good and uh man what an incredible writer and also during his performances oh so they heard the song and stuff there and they invited us on the tour and i was going to go back to saudi to jeddah for you know Vacation. This is still the vacation, the same vacation. I still that haven't never taken. Happened. It never happened. Yeah, since uh, April, it never happened. Musab, make sure you work that in. <laughs> right? He needs yeah. it, I think. Saying <laughs> next week, inshallah. <laughs> we'll see about that. Probably more stuff will pop up. But yeah. no, we should we should be smart about it and take a little break, I think. But anyway. So we think, okay, shit, we can either go home or, you know, just fucking do this thing. To be or not to be. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Let's do it. And we, we did it and bam. We, we went straight on the tour, straight to the European leg of the tour from the very beginning from London. We started in London and then we did even, we had other stuff as well. So it was yeah. like a complete like. Was it a three month, six month stint or how long was the? I'll, I'll get that. This one was for one month, uh, Europe tour. Month and a half. So that was the first leg. That, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And we had other stuff in between it as well. We had like the the Billboard Arabia opening. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations to every Arab out there who's a fan of music for that. Honestly, it's a big deal. I know it's incredible. I don't think many people realize how huge and awesome that is, but it's really awesome and huge. Big things are happening in this part of the world. Yes, absolutely. Things that are a long time coming, mm -hmm. and now we're, you know, we're seeing a lot of people becoming pioneers and making huge footprints. And then you have even from. I don't know. It's just very incredible to see because this was one of the things my father would tell me would be like, there's nothing here for you. There's nothing here for you. Now, Saudi Arabia, everything is here for you. 
the biggest gaming festival in the world, Gamers 8, the biggest music festival in the world, Middle Beast, even the biggest studio in the world. We just need more people in it. We need, it it'll take some time, but, take, it's, but, but that will at least it's, it's a work in progress and it's, it's moving at the speed of light at this point. Absolutely. It, it's mind-blowing just how, how the transformation that's taken place over the next, I mean, just two years ago was a completely different landscape. Yeah. Well, hats off, MBS. and I love him so much. You don't understand. This dude, like, I, I'm where I am today because of him. And I'm fully aware of that. And hopefully many others will, you know, yes, will, will, be. will reap those benefits. And, and more even. Like, look, we're doing this, Musab and I, but we're, you know, cutting, yeah. uh, cutting our way through, you're trail, honestly. You're trailblazing. You're, you're setting a, a much needed blueprint in this area. That's what he calls it, actually. He calls it a blueprint. It is. We, yeah. we don't have one. Yeah. We need one. And I'm, I'm glad it's you guys. I mean, you know. Thanks, man. We really are trying our best. We really do our you're best. Doing, you're doing amazing. You're doing amazing. And I've been around the block a little bit like we spoke about off air. Trust me, what I'm seeing in, in you guys' effort is exemplary. And, and, and I do hope it, it blows the doors wide open for, for others to come. Inshallah, yes. But, but, but I'm saying also carry that torch with pride and, and gratitude because it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. And it, you're chosen. You have been chosen for something greater than than you may realize, you know. But I think you're you're walking the part, you're acting the part. Just continue to do what you're doing, both of you, Anjad. Hats off to to you both. Yeah, dude. Brian and I started writing together. That's amazing, man. Yeah, you play any video games? I uh, used to. Like to, to be fair, I stopped at Crash Bandicoot. I don't know if okay. you. Okay, I love <laughs> Crash Bandicoot actually. So that's kind of like. That's where I, I, I stopped playing. But. Around the same time the Crash Bandicoot came out, there was, I don't know, at least one, if there was one that came out in 2007, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, of course. Dude, I was obsessed with this game. This was like on the PlayStation. This was my thing. I wasn't allowed to play GTA. And this was the closest thing. But you get to play also as an Arab. And that was, wow! You know, as a kid, because everybody, I would play CSGO, you we're the bad guys. You're playing Call of Duty. You're the bad guy. Oh my God, dude. I can't I just be an Arab and good. Yeah, you're either a terrorist or oil. <laughs> and there's no in between. No. Assassin's Creed gave you something really cool. Yep. They, they showed history is actually mm -hmm. accurate. Yep. Even the dates of when the people die in the game, by the way. Like you'd have like Robert de Sable, who's like the head of the Templar bad guys. Mm -hmm. his, uh, his date of death is and they line it up with the game mm. and with the time yeah, frame yeah. that the game goes in. it's really cool and their attention to detail is amazing i'm a super fan of, the, of that franchise and i've been playing every single game since and i was very like a lot of fans like a lot of people start i mean like i still play the games like i'm obsessed with odyssey right now replaying it which is like the greek version of it even though you don't play as the assassin the whole game is assassin's creed and you're not even playing as the actual assassins. And people got really pissed at that. Yeah. And like, it, of course, they're still hugely successful games because it's, it's Assassin's Creed. It's a franchise that's been going on since forever. But it's not a success, I, I would say, to what it could be because of it, it's, it's Assassin's Creed, for God's sake. You know, it's not like how Black Flag was or like any of that stuff. It's like they changed it. They made it more RPG and they kind of lost their way. Yep. Kind of like how I felt I lost my way, honestly, when I went to the States. And then now they're bringing it back. And the home is changing the album, by the way. It's like the deep. And then they have like the chapters. And then the last chapter is the return, which is basically you start at rock bottom and then you go through this journey until you find yourself at like, you know, return to self, return to, you know, your yeah. groundedness and stuff and return to home too. And Assassin's Creed did the same goddamn thing. They went from where they were all the way in like what uh, it was in Norway, I think the last location. And now they're bringing it back to the Islamic empire. It's going to take place in the height of the goal of the, wow. yes, the golden age of, of the Islamic empire, which is already super sick. And they're going to be having a, um, your character is a main character called Basim. He's an Arab and okay. he's like badass as fuck. And he, also you get to play as a real assassin. So finally, everyone's super excited. Myself, like extremely excited. And so when Ryan and I are writing together, 
we finish making this song called Mirage. Was it intentionally for the game or you guys just happen to be writing? Now it is. Now it is. Okay. Now it's the Assassin's Creed. Oh, uh, snap. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> and, it's, and we filmed a music video as well for it. All while on tour, we went on a, wow. uh, another, yeah, we went on another trip to Malta. Shot it there. It was super hot. I had to change my outfit like three times because of all the sweat. Like someone passed out. Man, that's massive. Yeah, he's in, incredible. I mean, definitely, of course, I was a fan from before, but after this tour and like being with him personally and like he, he he's such a nice guy as he well. Is, yeah. Like he really, he really is. is lovely. And he does, he did so many things he didn't have to do. Like he would take us out. Like he took me after writing one of the songs to uh, the oldest restaurant in the world. Where is that? It was in Austria, in Salzburg. And uh, it's the same restaurant where Christopher Columbus ate and Mozart. We were sitting there and like eating. And it's just like, I don't know. It felt like, how do I say this? Like, it felt really good to have, um, like it inspired me. It felt really good to have almost like an older brother, like a big yeah, brother, yeah, but yeah. in music. And what an what a great brother to have. I mean, he's probably one of the best you could ask for. You know, I think honestly, he is. Like, he's like mega talented. Yeah, and, and really also is. super smart. Super smart. Like he made Songland. Like he's yeah, one, yeah. And like a bunch of things that he's doing now. He's really on top of it. Like he's there's not a minute wasted, and that's something that we we you know aspire to. But like, it, it, it's good that you have that as a again as, as something to look up to you know because one thing we like in this part of the world is mentors you know yes those who have lived it those who have done it you know so it's great that you're getting it from arguably one of the best songwriters of our day you know he, he's amazing not just as a songwriter a singer producer he's he's like the whole package man they were also the first uh rock band to come to saudi were they yeah okay they okay. were which is a cool coincidence like or pop rock i guess uh but it's rock, dude. Yeah, it's still yeah, rock. Yeah, still. It's great goddamn music. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That has a huge inspiration for me because I want to be like that for here. Oh, I'm sure you will. That's it. Mishan, That's like you're doing all the right things. It's a matter of time and trusting the process, man. Just continue doing your thing. Did that um have a hand in, in you opening for Imagine Dragons in Saudi Arabia or War Two? No, it was uh, disconnected. Okay, gotcha. But it was cool. How did that come about? Uh Imagine Dragons, we actually, we wanted to open up for them a long, like not a long time ago, but like last year. And then we were like thinking, we were so sad about it because we were like super close for it to happen. And then it fell through. And then we were thinking, oh, man, you know, if only like, damn. But then here's the thing. Sometimes things don't happen, so they can happen in an even better way later. This was the final closing of the tour. And... It was at home and it was with gaming and the song that was the anthem for the gaming festival for gamers 83 all 2023 yeah my song so even when they had the technical malfunctions every single show i have there's always a technical difficulty it's like a curse i don't know it's really weird lean into it i do be afraid if you ever do a show that doesn't have a technical man i'll be freaking out yeah <laughs> put it in your writer you're like there must be <laughs> do something wrong exactly. <laughs> just like bump into something <laughs> in london there was a technical difficulty a really bad one the mic goes off this is during the uh the tour with this the is the one. first show no with way. the one republic <laughs> no way <laughs> my first impression oh my god do tell <sighs> take the microphone I start singing and I look at people's faces and for like five seconds everybody's into it then I start seeing this what's he doing what's he <laughs> what's happening and then I see my parents in the audience they're going like this because my whole family came my whole family all my cousins my friends everybody came to the first show in London it's a big deal man it's a big deal for us you know like and he, it's oh, it's me show it's going it's, it's all the all, right, all my like family friends family everybody and we're Arabs this is what we do come on you know let's like it's a beautiful thing it's our culture and uh, even after that night we went back I had Mulukhi oh amazing <laughs> this uh, oh dude I see them going like this they can't hear yeah. me oh my god they can't hear me and then they hear in my uh, microphone in ears yeah in my in ears the guy says 
guys, you're going to have to, what's it called, basically leave the stage. And uh, the band starts leaving the stage. There's a, like a really bad, like there's like a power cut thing that uh -huh. happened. All the music is gone at this point. So, so I stand there. And then obviously I'm freaking out, but I don't, I try not to show it. And instead I think, fuck, you know, I'm here anyway. The microphone I noticed starts working again because I was tapping it with my fingers and I hear it start making a sound. Like I was doing this out of nervousness. With in, the microphone. And you're hearing this in your in, in ears, my ears. Yeah. And I yeah. hear like, okay. We're back. We're back. But the band has left the stage and I'm all alone and there's no music. So what do I do? I walk up to the front of the stage and I sit down. My legs On the hang. edge. Wow. Yeah, okay. So my legs hanging outside. And I tell the audience, probably never seen me before. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. And I just started talking to them. I started talking to them about music a little bit. I started talking to them about like who I am. And right before the power comes back on, I say one thing. Also, I mentioned, of course, this is my first time outside of my home country and, uh, you know, all of this is first time performing, performing yeah. like this. And um, how I even like slightly talk about how music is right. And how like for us, it's really special, you know, to be doing something other than like, you know, being a doctor and engineer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like it slips out. Because people were telling me before, don't say you're from Saudi Arabia. Not when you're, don't say when you're abroad. Don't say you're from Saudi Arabia. They're not going to like it. I? I said it. For a split second, there was silence. Oh, there was. Yeah. It was so short that it was, it felt like, you know, there was a story they told me when I was in school, in music school, mm. about Billie Holiday. Now, Billie Holiday, she made this song called Strange Fruit. Mm -hmm. when she sang that song and so it's about the black people getting lynched yep. and um, you know this was during the time when that was still happening and um, so she was a very much a risk for it herself right and she wasn't singing to African Americans she was singing to you know right, the opposite yep. <laughs> and um, there was silence after she sang that song for a very short period of time, like, like also like not even a second. And then one person starts clapping and then the whole room was applauding and thing, it, went, it went great. With my show, it didn't start with a clap. It wasn't even one of my family members. They were horrified when I said that. And when they saw the reaction at first, it was a white dude with glasses somewhere in the back of the room with his wife and kids. Yeah. And they just, ah! everyone, it's all, even on TikTok and stuff, everyone after that ah! freaks out. And after when I say it again, they even freaked out more. And then like, you must have felt like a, a gazillion bucks at this point. My God, dude, my heart sank and then shot up to the stars. That's what it was. Thinking about it now, it's just like hard to yeah, stop the smile. I, I, you know, I'm, like, I'm smiling from the inside. Well, I mean, it's, we, it's a big deal. This. Yeah, and yeah. then after after that, there was like a dude that came like uh, in one of the other shows as well, like an Arab guy after the shows. Um, he said my name like perfectly. I don't know if you saw the video. Where he goes like, no. you have to check it out. Dude. If you see the video, you'll see like it shows this kind of instant connection that you have with Arabs. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with each other. And like, I noticed this, especially when I was in Germany, like a lot of the, the staff that would be yep. working in the venues mm -hmm. would be Arab. And they would hear certain Arab songs, uh, Arab words in the song. And they'd be like, wait a minute, like, <laughs> wait, where are you from? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. This is odd. And then they, and, and some of the, like a couple of them, like, I don't know. I just think it's really cool. And I think for the longest time, especially in global media, and that means like the internet, Arabs have kind of been ignored and, and, you know, put aside as like a scapegoat, right? Now we're entering the spotlight. It's slowly happening, but it's happening. It's happening. Now you, you know, can, you can touch it and feel you it. You can finally. feel it. It's yeah. tangible. Yeah. 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 And we're finally becoming cool. 
And this has always been a thing, you know. I mean, in terms of like how what people find, you know, it's like a the give and take between um, what rejection and yep. uh, wanting. No, but hatta within ourselves, uh, we have an inferiority complex as Arabs, unfortunately. Because still. of colonialism. Not just because of that. We have, unfortunately, we've been programmed, or we think that if it's from the West, it must be better, which isn't true. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. not necessarily, mind you. They've, they've done a lot more than we've managed to do yet, but that doesn't make them better than us. You know what I mean? We have the talent. I think by and large, we, we lack the self-belief, you know, it's a, a, again, because we don't have that, bl that blueprint that we're talking about. We have a few names that have kind of made it on a global. It's not the same. That's one thing that I really hated about this part of the world. Like you have to say Beyonce Al Arab. You have to say, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like. Why can't you just say Mishal? Why can't you just say insert artist's name? Why does it have yeah. to be the something that lives there of this region? Why? You know what I mean? Like, so we still haven't made it past those layers. But I feel like again, your efforts and the efforts of a you know a few other artists are starting to kind of break down those walls. Things aren't going to happen overnight. No, absolutely but not. Like the best thing is that it's happening. It started, and nothing can stop it. You know what I mean? How long it takes before it becomes the norm? It's anyone's guess, but it's happening quickly. You know, and plus the world nothing is moving. Nothing can stop it. Nothing, nothing can. Nothing can. Yeah, that's the song. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It just started. Yeah. Regardless, so yeah. Just... That made me feel really good when he said that. <laughs> Do something with it. I will. I want to close the gap on the university because you talked about mm. not finishing, right? Oh, yeah. We yes. talked about yeah, it. Yeah. So if you can just close that gap before. For sure. So um, things started going well after the um, after that first sample, right? And then, like, I started releasing songs onto, uh, just, like, through DistroKid, like, on my laptop. And I started generating a decent amount of income as well from that. And also just, like, the samples as well that we get sampled and people would use them a lot. Publishing and all that. Yeah, and then like even DistroKid royalties, like you just get like a new, you know, it, it shows like every like few months. And um, at what point I was like, damn, like I can just, um, you know, do this, right? Fast track it. <laughs> yeah, but, and I, and I knew like I was, and I found the studio as well. And here's here's the thing. Because like the people on Discord were like, go to studio, go to studio, go to studio. And I was too shy to use the school studios because then I would have to like, like people would always be seeing what I'm what I'm doing if I was there and I wouldn't feel that. You have your own process. You've got your yeah. comfort zone and all that. No, I wouldn't even call it comfort zone because it definitely wasn't comfortable to be in the studio. But I mean, like if it's something familiar, like if you prefer to write it in the dark and it's light. Yes. Yeah. You know I mean? like yeah, it's, yeah, it's your own like kind of safe place. Let's just say. Yeah. Or, or, or also just like the, in the school, it was very limited. And the studio was just like a, you know, a test at first, right? It was like what 30 bucks for an hour. And it was like the first was studio room a, which was like expensive. And I was like, no way I can afford mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And, um, it would be like, you know, just not a, a no go, but then there's studio B. And then there was also the third studio, which didn't even have a letter to it. Yeah. That was the one that I was in. Studio M. <laughs> studio M. It was the size of like... This table. The, not as long as this table. So it was actually smaller. It was actually kind of like the couch. Yeah. And just a little bit, a little bit wider. Yeah. And that was the room. And it had just like... Uh, just for tracking vocals for, and stuff. Yeah. The same place for tracking was the same place for like yeah. with, the, with the DAW and everything. And the interface, they didn't even have like a mixing board, nothing. Just like, mm -hmm. it's all in the box. And uh, I go there and I have the one hour session with Greg. He's like a friend, he's now one of my closest friends, is Greg Reccio. Shout out to old Greg. I call him old Greg. But um, I enter there at 3 p.m., supposed to leave at 4 p.m. I left 6 a.m. the next morning. And Greg was still there with me too. We didn't leave. We just finished at 6 a.m. Realizing that it wasn't, we didn't even leave yet. We, we, the manager was coming at 6 a.m. The manager that's of the studio. That's the best. That's the best. That's my barometer. If I know I'm having a good time or I'm doing the right things, that's when time disappears. Yeah. hundred percent. But also I was like, I'm fucked. I can't, I can't afford this. 
And the manager was coming at 6 a.m. So he comes in, this big, this big, really big Italian guy, New York Italian guy, so scary Italian. He's super buff. And he just finished the gym and he was, he went there at four. So he's been working out at the gym from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Pumped up. He's at all 6 pumped up. He's wearing sunglasses. It's not even light yet, <laughs> you know, and it's fucking winter in New York. New York. You know, you're in trouble. He's wearing a tank top. It's winter. He's like, damn. Uh, shit. You know, I'm scared now. See this big guy come in the room. And uh, Greg starts like playing him the song. He's like, oh, let's hear what you guys are doing. He's like, he's like scary, but in a good mood, but still scary. But he was also tense. And now he's actually, he's a teddy bear. He's the sweetest guy in the world. And I love him. Mike G. But um, he was listening to the songs and Hind he was caught off guard. I was surprised because it's my first time doing something like this, right? But for me, I can tell you my experience, how it felt personally to me. I was not trying to make a good song. It was just flowing, yeah. I was trying to make songs that I wanted to hear that didn't exist yet. You know when you're like uh, imagining a movie in your head and you're like, damn, imagine they made, or like you get a video game and you're like, oh, I wish this video game had a, a kind of a bit more of that video game or like you know like a kind of a mixer of that i wish that existed right and it doesn't exist obviously because that's why you wish it and when you go to this place it's like wow you're a painter and now for the first time in your life you've got yourself a canvas and it's blank and with every color and paintbrush shape in the world that's what the studio is in the box that's what it's like to have that computer with literally limitless options i mean of course you can drown in it if you don't know what you want but if you've been imagining songs that don't exist, that you've been wanting to make happen, and all you had was a guitar and a, you know, an arm that doesn't even work right, this is heaven. <laughs> I was in fucking heaven. Kid in a candy store. I was kidding, exactly. I was a kid in a candy store, man. That's why I stayed so long. And Mike, when we played him the first like, song, he's like, wow, that's... He wanted to hear more, right? And after he was surprised, that it was, he was like, well, who wrote it after Greg points? Mm. And who is singing it as well. And the produced as well. So he tells me, okay, listen, I know it's a cold. Uh, you were here from 3 p.m. And I'm like, fuck, I'm fucked. <laughs> What's the bill going to be? Yeah. Oh my God. In my head, I'm thinking, dude, he likes my songs, but he's going to be like, get out of here now. All right. And he says something that's stuck in my head. Because whenever I felt down, I would always think of this as a way to motivate me. Mm. Because this was still early on, right? I'm still learning. This was my first time, you know, doing this, like yeah. beginner's luck. Yeah. And it was also in New York, a very competitive. And this studio is like Pop Smoke comes to the studio. And yeah. like, or like it was, it's like a legit one. Even, even though that room was the furthest thing from legit. Like you couldn't close the door, didn't work properly. You're not allowed it, it to It doesn't fart matter. Inside. It's just the fact that you know who frequents the, those places. You know, speaks yeah. volumes for it. Yeah. And then he basically offers me a deal. He goes, "Listen, I he he works for Sony uh, publishing side in terms of like he's a songwriter, and he's like, dude, you're like you've got such a great sense of melody, and." Um, your production is top notch. You know what I mean? Like you're a kid, but like, you know, it's like, it's like if you help me out with melodies and lyrics, mm -hmm. lyrics every once in a while, or like production notes and stuff, I'll let you use this room when no one is using it. And I knew that room is not used by fucking anyone. It wasn't even on the website. Mm -hmm. I had to figure, find out about that room over the phone. So what did I do? I said, deal, deal, deal. Went to my dorm, packed my stuff, took my mattress, took my pillow, Realize the mattress doesn't fit, put back the mattress. <laughs> well, pillow, <laughs> only pillow. pillow and, and pillow, toothbrush, and like pillow, the toiletry bag, and just like a couple blankets. Not even the duvet. The duvet was taking too much space in the room, so instead I'll just have the shorter blankets. And then I went to what's it called, um, Bed Bath and Beyond. I got one of those like thin, yeah. fleece-like blankets. <laughs> yeah. It's so much better than the duvet, honestly. When you're in the first studio, kind of. Uh, yeah. yeah. Not that anybody, you know, goes and does that. Like I was sleeping with my leg under the table and my head under the chair. Like the stool stuff of the, uh, the, stool stuff of the chair would, would be like the support for my pillow. 
and I'd put the pillow there and sleep like that. Five star. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't care yeah. because the room had no windows. The room, I don't know if it was daytime or nighttime. I, I was doing what I love. I did not have any sense of time. And my academics struggled for that. Mm. They, they, my, my, my academics, sorry, not struggled. <laughs> they were hurt, right? Like my grades were hurt badly from that. Like I started skipping classes. Also keep in mind, Rick, this time I was borderline suicidal. I was not in a good state of mind at all. And um, music was all I had. Like I didn't talk to anybody. I would go weeks without talking to anyone. I would only talk to Mike or Greg when they would come by. Yeah. Like I said, I would lose track of when it was daytime or nighttime. I wouldn't care. And despite how sad I was, I guess, I was happy as well. It's still a time that I look back on and I'm not quite sure how to feel about it because I can look back on it with pity on one side and say, wow, what a lonely existence. Or I can look at it as the most creative freedom that I've ever had in my life because I did not care what I spoke about at all and I would put it all out there gone things that I wouldn't even admit to myself I would admit in these songs not even try to hide it sometimes Say it. stream of consciousness it was clear it was your download whatever was happening yeah. here was was 800 songs mm. wow that's more than most established artists career i mean how long what's the time span it was like a year and a half almost yeah what you managed to do in a year and a half is what a lot of household names will not even reach their entire career well you know i got better during that time as well i think like like, that's why I look back on it as well, you know, with pride, because I learned a lot during that time, not from the outside world. I mean, I was, <laughs> I was cocooning myself, but uh, I learned how to play instruments that I never knew how to play before. I learned how to produce on different DAWs and how to really fine tune it, how to finish something. You know, that's very important. That's the, the hardest important. discipline. Yeah. Yeah. To finish something because it, it starts with a four bar loop and you, you get stuck there. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it goes on to infinity. <laughs> yeah. But to really, uh, and to become a good thief of ideas, you mean? I am. That's worst. essential. That's essential. Man. True, Everybody yeah. does. It took it. a while to realize that, I think, as well. Like, and what you said in the beginning also hit home. And not to force something to be simple, just to let it be. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a huge difference between them. Because one is calculated, and that's always with forcefulness, it's calculation. The other one is just flow. Accepting versus expecting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or God forbid, pushing. <laughs> you know, because that's the thing that happens. But wait, so Clive Davis, this studio, I start feeling my, gra my grades like really bad. And then my parents, because I'm not showing up to classes, I'm only showing up to music class. And then even then, like, I'd be so tired because I would be like, you know, in the studio all night and, you know, I was uh, gonna get kicked out of school. And then, I have a sit down with like, what's it called? My parents and they're like, listen, like, you wanna, and I was thinking to myself, like I'm making more than what the school is uh, asking me to pay for anyway. I'm doing it from music. I'm studying music. What's the point? Stupid, arrogant kid. And um, then my father makes me a deal, another one. And it's this time it's an, like, uh, like an ultimatum. Kind of thing. He's like, you want to do music? You want to do music? I will not let you. And, I, I, and he has the power to not let me do 
if he if he really wanted, he'd be like, okay, no studio, and he'll make sure that I never go to a studio. You know, because like he's my father, right? And I love him, even if I even if he like even if I had a way to do it, I would not Out of respect. disrespect yeah, him yeah, like yeah. that. I you get, know, like he's that, my yeah. father. Yeah. So I took it very seriously, and uh, I was like, okay, well, I will, and I felt ashamed. Because in the family, I was always known as like the kid, like I said earlier, like the good kid. He's just, he reads a lot of books. Mm -hmm. He does good yeah. grades. Not the greatest at sports, <laughs> but you know. So having that, like, I don't know. I felt like I disappointed them. And I didn't like that at all. So I, I said, okay, let me hold on to music for a second. And I'm going to get on the Dean's list. They're like, okay, wait, hold on. You just have to get your grades back up. You don't have to like go to as soon as I said no, no, no. I mean, this is that's what my thing was. And I did. I got to the dean's list. And at the same time, I ended up not halting music. Wow, you managed to do them together. I managed to do them together. And uh found a little something called balance, which is still trying to find it today. But I think there are certain points in my life where I managed to have it for like a little bit, hold on to a little bit before it slips away again. You know, and that was one of those times, alhamdulillah, because it needed to be that time. That same time was essential, and I had no idea how important the timing was. But it was, because at the same time that that was happening, at record labels, the right exact universe alignment of where people were at which time, and who moved from where to where, and who they were, and who they knew, and I don't know what, that word started spreading about this kid who was living in a studio and they called him the studio rat. That was me. No one knew what he looked like, but they all knew what I sounded like because Mike was sharing the music. Yeah. Internally, of course, just like, yeah, yeah. and he didn't tell me. <laughs> he didn't tell me. I had no idea about any of this. And, um, and he wasn't even shopping. Like this is not, you know how you go yeah, like record day with shopping? shopping? Yeah. It's not, not even shopping. He wasn't showing. He's just it. sharing his, yeah. He's showing it to his friends. He's not even showing it to like A&Rs or anything like this. Nothing formal. It was very, but I think that helped. I think that put me in a better light. I think like strategically, that's something you should do instead of shopping. Man, it puts you in a, in a much better position when you, you don't ask for something. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what I mean. I got yeah. lucky. I think it's just like yeah. the right alignment of things that happened that led to these. You did your part and the rest took care of itself. Yeah, just do what you can and do the best that you can when yeah. you're doing. Word spreads that people start coming to the studio, and I was still this stupid, arrogant kid, right? And now also studying on top of it. So not only was the room with like musical instruments, but they also had like books. <laughs> and now I piled on top, and I'd be like balancing, like I'd be like recording, and then I'd do like this button, this song, and then I can continue, you know. And they would come, and I would be like, you know, leave me alone. Like I'm not doing this for. No, I already make enough for my lo-fi stuff. I can just keep making samples, not to show my face to anybody. And I can generate income with that. And then with that, I can, I'm fine. I don't need, I, I don't want, not just, I don't, I don't want. And they were like, oh yeah. Oh, they have to do it. And they always say weird things to do. They'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, we'll make you something, man. It's like, oh dude, the potential one. I don't know what. Or they'd be like, oh yeah, you're a good looking kid. Dude, I don't want to, I don't want anyone to look at me. No one, no one. I want to just be here in this room doing this because this feels good. And look, man, I'm trying to make my parents proud as well. I want to focus on my studies and just get these grades up and keep doing the thing that's keeping me going for God's sake, like this is literally keeping me going. And, I, and I'm not comfortable to share with other people. The only reason why I'm allowed to do this at all, why this works for me, is because I know no one's listening to this. Little did I know a lot of people were listening to it because of Mike. And then these A&Rs kept fucking coming. I started getting confused. I started getting upset even. How do they know about me? Who's telling people what's going on? Why? Things started getting leaked online as well during this time. And then like, this is because I didn't even have my name, Mishal Tamur. No mm -hmm. one knew who Mishal Tamur was. It was still Papa Misho. So it would be like Papa Misho or like it would, sometimes people would get it right and have like Mishal and I don't know how they would find They would find my Facebook accounts and stuff. Yeah. And this was the start of the fan base. It was, again, not asking for it. I was never like, hey guys, come stream my music. Never. It, it, it was the opposite. It was literally uh, like... About as organic as it gets. Not even organic. It was literally like, I wanted nothing to do with these people. <laughs> I wanted to be alone. I was so sad and so lonely and I wanted to be there. There was a comfort in that sadness. 
This isn't even a lyric in, in pedal bike. It's basically saying like, yeah, I've got this pain in my chest, you know, I'm sad and stuff. It's like a weird, you yeah. know that when you're heartbroken. I call it the hole in, in your chest feeling. Yeah, there's a hole in my chest. I, I wrote a song that has a lyric that says exactly that in one of my songs. Bro, mm -hmm. me too. Actually, the latest song I released, Disco Cowboy, says that like a million times. There's The, the lyrics for it are super... Uh, like you listen to the song, you're gonna laugh. It doesn't even have structure. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm a I'm a pop structure head, right? So for me to make a song like that, like, I want you to know honestly, Dan, I never planned for any of this to happen. It's the best part. This go cowboy. It's not even like a pop song. It's like it's literally you hear this. It's one melody. The whole song is essentially one melody, just repeated. And that that there's a hole in my chest, hole in my chest. There's a hole in my chest. But it's that feeling. So if you know, if you call the whole interest, I wonder if you can relate. If you want to check that out later. But yeah, I didn't want anything to do with it. And then I start, to, and a lot of them were like indie labels as well. They were not like major record labels or anything. They were like normal indie labels coming up and being like, hey, blah, blah. And I'd be like, no, I do not want to be an artist. I, know, I just want to stay here. It's exactly what I'm doing. And stay complacent. And I was happy. In my, I was comfortable. Like that point right now, before this, before meeting someone where I was in that hole, it's called the deep. Yep. That's my, that's a chapter of my life. I like to call it the deep. And Ryan Tedder knows all about that. Oh yeah. You know, he wrote Rolling in the Deep with the... I know. <laughs> and dude, like rock bottom I hit at mm -hmm. one point even. And after that rock bottom, um, like I realized, I was even in a place where, like, dude, I wouldn't even brush my teeth. It was disgusting. Like, I, I would go days without, like, my hygiene was horrible. I didn't care about anything. And then I met someone. This is like to call chapter two. The lava. I'm just kidding. It's the heart. Mm. It's like, oh my God, this is what saved me from the deep. Oh my God, this is my way out. I'm now I'm gonna be whole again. Now I'm gonna be like I was when I'm a little when I was a little mm. kid, you know, excited yeah. about things again. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I'm excited when I see her. But That's not what happened at all. It did not save me from the deep at all. It, it, um, it definitely got me feeling more. I think during the time when I was in a relationship was also when I... It brought the pulse back. You had no pulse and... Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, it had a little pulse to it. And even with my parents, like during this time, I, I call it the heart because it's not only that I met someone romantically, but this was during the time when we started having... We started having like family lunches more and stuff like that. When we'd see each other, the family would keep trying to reconnect. Were they living abroad at that point? Everyone, yeah. Okay. At this point, everybody was living abroad. My brother was in, you know, it was in, my older brother was in university in Scotland. My little brother was in uh, boarding school in London. And I was in New York in the, the, the studio. Where were your folks at that point? My folks, my dad was in Saudi. Okay. And uh, my mom also, I think, was in Saudi and going to London to see my little brother as well, like in between. And my mom specifically, that was like, that was, that was tough for me. Like, I've never been a mama's boy per se, if anything, I'd say a bit the opposite, but that's resulted in a little bit of a tumultuous relationship, which, it, which shows in my music. I mean, I might as well talk about it. It's all over the album, but, um, that started there in the heart because it's a deep closeness, you know, with my mom. And she really is my biggest fan and been with me through everything. And I have so much respect for that woman. Even now, like she's like doing the merch and stuff, by the way, like all the, yeah, yeah even the merch is coming out in October is designed by mama. M Musab has some competition. Yeah. You've got a mama's shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Not working. laughs> 
but um, on a side note, how did you and Masab uh, connect? I'm interested to know about that. Yeah, can he talk about that? Masab found me from Instagram, mm. and uh, what video was the first one? Cigarette. Cigarette. It was a, a little clip of me singing cigarette, and he found me from that a long time ago, like in 2019. And Musab is actually like, if, if you see his page and stuff like that, he's a huge supporter of so many artists. Yeah, I see that. Right, like he's always been into me. This guy grew up on MTV, essentially. He is literally like the perfect, the perfect. Honestly, so many. He's a perfect. Spe- he he is like a Saudi bred music mogul in the making. Is how I like to describe this guy. Honestly, hey, look at him blushing now. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. It's true. If you see him, what he's like, what he's with his personality and everything, and how he like carries himself, what he goes for, mm. how determined he is, his energy level, his discipline, despite like even being tired. And we've been on tour. He came with me on tour the whole tour. Mm. Dude's got stamina. I'll tell you that. So he, with this stamina, he kept messaging me during this time where I didn't want anything to do with anybody. So I would, I would not answer a lot. <laughs> you ghosted him? No, man, I wouldn't ghost, but I would just not like open my phone. I would leave it and I wouldn't, I didn't care. Honestly, I was just making music. And not just that, but it's not that I didn't care. I felt like it wasn't real. I felt like. You hadn't absorbed it yet. Like I haven't it, absorbed it. Yeah. And I felt almost like, like, what's the point? Just in embarrassing myself i wish i haven't like told anyone about this and that's why those 800 songs are an album stupid i should have put a lot of them out i think the time wasn't right the time wasn't right now i know well hopefully i'm still sometimes i still look back but like now i'm less than before look those 800 songs it's all part of the plan man just go with it i will i think so i think what else can i do keep doing what you're doing don't question too much you have good people. Musab's got your back. I can tell. Your parents got your back. You know when he actually met me in person? When? He's a persistent motherfucker, man. He comes to he goes to not not even not even an official show. This was like a last minute show in Riyadh that I did for a friend of mine, Mohammed Bajba. Hey, shout out to Mohammed Bajba who does Proud Angeles. And he was like, Mish, you want to come do like a couple songs? So I was like, yeah, dude, look, I'll do it for free. So I came, I did the show, and Musab was there in the audience. Comes to me after the show and he puts his hand on my shoulder. He's like, hey, listen, kid, I got a job. No, I'm kidding. He was super nice and he was really a cool guy. And after my mom was there as well, so he met my mom and I had no idea or like, uh, like what he had in mind or anything like this. But he starts like, well, he, and he was also super supportive, like super supportive. Mm-hmm. This is like, this is years after the cigarette video, right? So this is after like I got better state of mind and stuff like this. And, um, I don't know. I just noticed that like this guy really believes in me like, more than myself, honestly. And like, it was still like only online for, at, that, at that point a little bit. Then we were talking more. We got each other's numbers and stuff from before, I think. But like, we kept talking. He had great ideas. And then I had uh, and my manager Nathan, who's in the states, gets him as an internship for what's it called? Um, Cause he was like, dude, he's obviously like super passionate about this. And he's like, obviously a fan of the music and he believes in it. Dude, even more than the own artist believes in it. Let's like, you know, let's make this happen. So I started talking to Nathan about it. And Nathan, Nathan starts talking to him every night for like hours. And he would stay up to like 3 a.m. Like just to do this every fucking night. And it's like, these are the things that people don't see. You know, like people think, oh my God, like it happened so quick. Oh my well, God, that's why it's so I wanted easy. to spotlight that because it, 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 it takes a village. And it, clearly you've done a lot on your own, but it's like you, swan kicking. You don't get to where you have gotten on your own. It just doesn't happen. No, absolutely not. And also you can, you don't get it. Uh, maybe unless you win the lottery is, you know, it's like, like, I don't know. I personally feel like every single person that's like very successful or has like some sort of success, there is a lot more work that has gone into that that we see and a lot more failure. Because my God, have we failed <laughs> way more times. I look at it as feedback. I don't necessarily look at it as, as uh, failing or succeeding. It's feedback, man. Yeah, that's, that's what the best you do way to look at it, honestly. That's the, yeah, it is. It is what it is too, mm. literally. But yeah, so he starts working with Nathan internship. And then, uh, what's it called? 
during this time as well, just like timing wise, it was perfect because I was uh, separating from Sony to do what's it called? Because we were getting now stuff from back home starts opening up. And like you can't, you can't have these all these opportunities happen. And then Sony wants their finger. In. And I love Sony Records. I love RCA. We still work with their guys. We still do a lot of stuff with them. Even my creative direction team is still yeah. the same guys mm -hmm. from RCA. But we were like, we started our own uh, now, which is really cool. And um, alhamdulillah as well now because my father also come, came in to support, and this was after 2022, the Middle Beast show in 2022. Where finally he goes like, but I skipped so much of the story now to say this, but like it makes sense with the well, I'm about to tell you this really cool news. So um, he goes, if you're gonna be a clown, you better be the best. And I actually put that in a song. It's in uh, yeah. a song called Baba Fan, and it's like right now that it was like one, of the, one of the latest songs that I've finished, and it was just like that's where I am right now. And it, it literally feels like Baba Fan, Baba. It feels like almost like at the same time the way the track is done, it's kind of like Baba Fan, Baba Fan, you know. <laughs> it's cool. It's like it's like a full closure circle just happened, and that was what made the album feel done. And that's also what brought Mus'ab onto the team. Now the album is finished. Now it's ready to market it correctly. Now it's ready to do the business side of it. I'm not a businessman. I'm a musician. He's a brilliant man. This guy, and also my father is a great businessman as well. He's come in and helped out so much like, with like advice and stuff like this. Even on, on the meetings like this, he would join in. Super supportive. And before he'd be saying, you're going to be a clown. And now he's like engaged in the meetings, be like, no, he will not do the, that. If you want to do this, da, 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 da. if you want my son for this, da, da. it's so, it's like seeing this support and having that before I was scared, I'd be in that meeting, just me and Nathan and like my lawyer. I have to even fire that lawyer and get another lawyer because he tried to like, there was a point where I had, you know, Atlantic, right? This is when we started shopping. Yep. We, well, we wasn't, we didn't actually shop the first, um, the first one we got, it came through word of mouth and we had a bidding war. Okay. So it was. That's at, the best position. It is the best position, and and bit and uh, Atlantic Records wanted to do a 1.2 million deal, and the lawyer and I didn't want that, because I was going for I want to, had a lot of terms and stuff like that that I wanted right like specifically, that I went through and I went I went to was literally studying this in school as well. This is like were these 360 deals multi album or no? I wanted to make sure that it wasn't the 1.2 million one was a 360 deal. Okay. And we would have fucked me in the ass too because they would have owned all the masters. And not even as a lease forever. You know what I mean? Like, my God. And the guy was going to really screw me. And uh, he wanted me to sign it with him getting a big chunk of that. Of course. Right. You know? And, uh, you know, being alone, I was like, what, 20 years old? Just turned 20? Like, what the hell am I doing? When I found out, I was heartbroken. Like, I thought this guy was my friend. You know, then I realized. That's when you find out who, who's on your team, who's not. Yeah. And you, and, and you, you it's like, I thought I had a good judgment of character. Like, the you, people You're that, blessed yeah. to not have signed some of these deals because these could be detrimental to your career. Yeah, the one I signed, thank God, like we got a new lawyer after him and uh, through Nathan. And it was uh, the same lawyer as Halsey and the same lawyer as actually the producer that I work with a lot, Andrew Wells. Hey, Habibi. I love this guy so mm. much. He's coming to Saudi, actually. Okay, well. nice. Uh, but... Um, Dude, it's a scary world out there. And it's like so much. I learned a lot doing that. A lot more than I thought I would. Like I, I learned about myself and how much I actually know. And like how to be cautious and how to, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. It's like. The older you get, the more you realize, the less you know. That's a natural progression. Isn't that funny? It's humbling, man. It's uh, Look forward to what's ahead. It, it only gets better, man. It gets better, but make sure you're not too focused on what's, you know, like try to be here now. Mm. Enjoy what, you know, that's the, that's the magic, man. The magic is, is in the, what you're doing right now, you know? Oh, Yeah. I wanted to ask you about a collaboration you did with Lunar recently. Oh, I love this guy so much, man. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I read I an did. article about the song. Why was it labeled as a Shailat song? It, it's not It's not very much a Shailat. I mean, it's. I understand, you know, Shailat and gaming and all that stuff and Gina and, you know, like the whole theme around it. 
I was just surprised with the labeling of it, you know, being a Shilat song. What, what's, what's the deal with that? It's the drum pattern. It, it's because of the drum pattern? Yeah. So School me on that because... Yeah, yeah I got you. It's a Mexican genre called banda, Mexican music. And people in Mexico, especially the young people from more like, you know, affluent classes or whatever, they don't like it. But banda's huge. Yep. Banda's really huge. And it's infused in a lot of... Um, and you see, yeah, little hints yeah, of it yeah. are, in, are, in, are, in, are in the music around the country. But the stuff that's made in banda performs super well. Mm -hmm. And then even now, there was, and then there was that song with Bad Bunny that uh, was with Grupo Frontera, which is like the, the banda yep. group. And it did super well. And um, then now you have people like Pesos Pluma, who makes banda music. And he's cool and he's young. And now you have young people who are now listening to banda. Where before this was like, what? You listen to banda, you're like, basically, like, what the hell? By association, it's frowned it, upon. It's, it's frowned it, upon, yeah. yeah. Kind of like how Shailat. It's exactly, not even kind of, it's exactly the same thing. You have a song that was a Shayla, it came out uh, last year. 200 million views on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, now it's, it's crushing, man. Shailat, the genre is, is massive. It's massive. It's huge. I don't think I've gone there yet, but what I'm something I've been experimenting mm -hmm. with, and mm -hmm. Gigi is yeah. prototype number one of this experimentation, gotcha, and gotcha. it's like the lightest version because it was commissioned as well to do it. Got it. Okay, so it's just that it's infused with it's it's inspired or it, it borrows from some of the Shelat's uh, uh, sensibilities, essentially. Yeah, it, it actually it at first was just straight up Shela. It was actually called Zelzera. Okay. Before it was called GGG, you know, it was called Zelzela. And it was like a completely different song. And, um, but we were, we were with Zelzela with all the like. Uh, oh, what had just happened. Exactly. Yeah. That's very like, you can't. So we, and, and GGG you now also works better for like gaming and stuff. Yeah. So it was a commission, but it opened my eyes to this thing, which is like, damn, man. We, like, and this is what we did in the studio. We did it in a day. How did the collaboration come about? Uh, through Empire. But we've been fans of each other already, Luna and I. But, man, those drums are stolen. I'll tell you, straight up. They're from an old uh, Shayla with like, it's like a SpongeBob. One of those like young kid Shayla, uh, Shaylats. And I actually got it from um, the super fan. And he's, oh, I forgot to tell his story. This super fan is, it comes from a very, he's from Riyadh. And he's 19. And he's the one who showed me that that song. And I, I asked him, I was like, dude, show me like Shailat, but like actually good ones, actually ones that you like. Like show me the stuff that like, mm, that's it's resonating. Like, this yeah. resonating that you like. And also show me the ones that everybody knows. Like if you play this in a party, everybody's going to know. So it, it was deliberate in other words. Yeah, it was 100% okay, gotcha. deliberate. Got it, and then okay. he goes, uh, what are you doing? bro? <laughs> Why you want to put, please don't do this. Please don't, you're my favorite artist. Please don't do this to me. Don't, don't do that. Don't wait, just give me a second, man. So after, I do it. I take it, <laughs> I take it, I take the drums for it. It's completely like, chick, 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 just, just, with the, that, chunk. Yeah. Da, da. That thing is like everything. It's, 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 it's the chorus that comes in and uh, the call and responses as well. That's super, you know, G, 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 that, that thing. And then, but that's it. It's the fundamentals. And it's basically Shailat, but pop. Gotcha. It's, so it's not super traditional. It's Shailat. not super traditional. No, it's more like modernized mm -hmm. pop with global appeal and something that I can get commissioned for to do for gaming. So it works and it has to like appeal to partners, it has to appeal to, you know, the right people that are paying for the fucking song. Grand save. And yeah. All that. Yep. Because it's, you know, it's not my song at the end of the day. Yeah. But it definitely made me want to go down that route a little bit. more. It opens up a lot of opportunities for sure. For sure. And I think a really interesting thing as a musician, and I think you'll really appreciate this, is you know how you have things running on a, on a four bar or eight or six, everything's all by fours, right? Mm -hmm. And you have the phrasing of it also happens, the repetition is after the fourth, mm -hmm. right? In Shailat, it's not always the case after the fifth oh wow good luck with the math there <laughs> no 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 but for a reason 
because the fifth is a response. Gotcha. So it's it's like, you know how they do the call and response thing? Mm-hmm. They do that, but they do it five times. So it doesn't go like four, eight, yeah. 16. Yeah. It was five, 10, 15. It's on a different grid, yeah. It's on a different grid. And because of that, the song, you can get away with making really repetitive mm-hmm. melodies yeah. work. Which is keyword for super catchy, super consumable, super shareable on the TikToks and the shorts and the reels. And Bizarre. The- exactly. You can have the 15 second clip or 10 second clip that's the main song also be the whole song. Yeah. And because it's on a different time frame, your brain doesn't see it as too repetitive. Your brain sees it as you're still trying to figure it out. It doesn't catch on to the, okay, so now we're... Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, the loop throws it's you like, off. It's yeah. like one of those... Um, it's like an auditory version of one of those hypnotizing things. And I think that's why it does so fucking well. And we don't like it because of the stigma attached to it. But take those elements and put it into a song that's consumable. That's the brilliance in what you're doing because taking something that is arguably frowned upon, right? Unless you're... I mean, it's, it's, it's a super localized flavor and it's, it's an acquired taste, right? Yeah. Um, and it's easy to just dismiss it and be like, oh, this isn't for me or it's whatever. There's the stigma, like you said. Um, I think it's great that you did that. It's really cool that you did that. I haven't gotten there yet. I'm trying to get there. I'm going back to the studio after this as well. This is this is my project after Home is Changing, actually. This is like, I'm talking too far ahead. But that's what I'm focusing on now. I want to make this thing. But I'm trying to get there. It's, it's uh, so many ways you can go with it. And it's going to take time to find the one that sticks. Show up, it'll happen. Just show up. Yeah, just keep showing up, yeah. Oh, wait, should I uh, close up the uh, college yeah, stuff? Yeah, I did okay. do that, yeah, yeah. So I got on the dean's list, and um, now that I got on the dean's list, I was like, okay, now that I'm on the dean's list, now I want to drop out of school. <laughs> now I can take new bargaining power. New bargaining power, you know, a new leverage. And that was part of the plan. Plus, at the same time, we were starting to get attention from the record labels because we just released Arabian Nights. Like, I went back home with my cousin Sultan, Sultan Tamar, who's now actually like straight up a legit director, by the way, in Saudi Arabia. Check him out. He's really good. And like he's... he's I saw his stuff and I was like, I wonder if he's related to Mish'al. He made the Arabian Nights... Rec- Arabian Nights Man, uh, like, and I saw video. the name and I was like, is it possible? Is it? I had no idea. Until you just told me, I had no idea you guys were related. No, we're related. We grew up together, everything. Okay, okay. We're still in New York, actually. We even uh, stayed as neighbors. Eventually. Okay, gotcha. That's cool, man. His work is really good. His excellent taste which is so important. And what's it called? Uh, yeah, he got an award recently. I saw. Yeah. You know, I, I can't read it. So him and I, we were like little kids essentially and we, no equipment, no nothing. Mm-hmm. And Bootstrapping. <laughs> bootstrapping, man. Yeah. And, and a camera. And this is school camera because he was going to also NYU but for, uh, you know, for a film. The film, yeah. And uh, it's like iPhone camera flashlights because we didn't have lighting either. And we make Arabian Nights, the, the music video. And then that starts garnering like attention online and people from people in the West too, which is interesting because it, it actually started, it got first pretty popular in South America. And from there, it went into Central. And then that kind of like, it's, it's weird. It's like it traveled and you can see it, like how it traveled, which is really cool. But... Um, and it was like, you know, nothing crazy, but like it started getting a little bit of notice, right? And people will watch the video and be like, huh, we can do something with this guy. And um, then we started getting calls and stuff. And I'm thinking, wow, I can actually like, you know, maybe I should do this. And I was also in a better state of mind at this point. And then I think, okay, I'm going to take a leave of absence and do this. So I take a year leave of absence. I end up signing to uh, RCA in the States and Columbia Records in the UK. And uh, it was still, my parents were still like, you know, Mish, do your thing. You know, we're not going to stop you now. Khalas. Obviously, it's working. We don't want to get in your way, but we're going we're gonna to let you do your thing. So that's what, that's what it was. But they weren't really like, they still weren't like fully in it. On board. If, yeah. on, bo- on board. Yeah, yeah. They're still like, oh, apprehensive. apprehensive. Of course, it's scary. Like even in, in back home, I was not allowed to perform yet. You had to be 25 to have a singer's license. 
And then even when I performed, actually, I'm not 25 yet. So like uh, when I perform and I have to make sure that I talk in between. So is, is it a provision that way? Yeah, you, so yeah. I'm an MC. I'm not. Okay. okay. Isn't that funny? <laughs> a presenter, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I present to you me. <laughs> <laughs> I present to you me and my music. Yeah. Get that talk. Is there a connection with the Latin roots? Are you connected to that? Does that factor into what you're doing? Yes, because now I have this goal that has... Well, it's not... It's, it, I didn't come up with it. But it's kind of the trajectory that's been going. And I think this looks like it's what my path is. This looks like what it's meant for me to do. So that's what I want to do. And what I want to do is, as to the best of my ability, be this blueprint. Expand it to the most it can possibly be. To give really strongest push that I can against this wall that we're breaking. And... Um, I'm going to use every part of me to make that happen. All the tools, man. These are all tools in the tool shed. Use them all. Yes. The Latin market and music is massive. I'm a fluent Spanish speaker and I write songs in Spanish too. I also grew up with cumbia and like all the merengue, every, everything that's Latin music because of my mother. And I make some stuff as well on that kind of thing. What I want to do with it. Open it up. Open it up. How far can we take this project? How, how big can we get this blueprint to be? What can, let's show them what we got. And let's really show them every single part of it. And I'm not the only one. I'm not only representative of Mishal. I'm representative of what you can find in Saudi Arabia. Because there is a truth. You can find that. Dude, there's a huge community of half Latino, half Saudis. There's a huge community of half anything half Saudis. And you have such a diverse amount of people, such a rich culture with art flowing from its fingertips and nobody sees it. There are some eyes on me right now. How many eyes can we get? And from how far can we get them? Let's really, you know, push it to the max. I'm not going to be here forever. So I'm going to make the most of what I got. And the Latin root is one of the things. That I'm yeah. Doing. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, a, I don't want to say three, you know, Triple threat. You're like a quintuple of, <laughs> mashallah. I mean, you've got a lot of things going right for you, and and the fact that you're leaning leaning into all of them is is uh, commendable. I'm glad you're doing that because it's easy to just say, you don't want to carry too many, you know, apples at the same time. Because I like I like the focus that you have going right now, but I also like that your trajectory. Um, doesn't turn its back on that part of it and that you're going to lean into it and bring it, you know, to make it work for the kind of greater good and the greater. Yeah. I mean, what else? Also, like, remember how it was in the beginning? I didn't even want to like speak to anyone. Kind of like, even from even the beginning meeting with the arm, I wasn't writing songs before that. I wasn't. Things happen in life, and I think you can just, you have to just do the best of what comes to you. Michelle, you're like Mission Impossible. You're like, th this message will self destruct in five seconds, and you've accepted the challenge. I love it. You're, you're literally on Mission Impossible. <laughs> yeah. And it's like the, the clock is ticking, yes. and you're managing to diffuse it at the, at the most opportune time. That's exactly what it feels like. It's great, man. That's exactly what a journey, what man. Like. What a ride. And it's, it's anxious as well. A lot of times I even ask Mushab, like, am I too late? Oh, man. No, 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 no. You, you, you're too too on point. <laughs> you're too right. You're, <laughs> you're exactly where you need to be at the right time, man. Just, again, I cannot stress this enough. Double down on that. Lean into that. Trust the process. It's gotten you here so far. It only gets better. Look, you're going to eventually things aren't going to agree with you. You're going to have some b blocks. Again, go back to the, just focus on getting back up. Uh, yes. Have a support system. Musab, your parents, well, the, you're surrounded by good people who mean well, who want what's best for you. Be careful about those who want to kind of latch on because they exist as well. But hopefully you've got a, a good shield that will protect you from that. And continue to do the trusting of the 
messages and the showing up. If you show up, it only gets better for you. Yeah. Movie time. Talk to me about the movie. Oh my God, dude. This movie was meant to happen in 2016. And it's directed by Ahad Kamel, who's a ridiculously talented person and an incredible human as well. And the movie was shut down mid-production in 2016 because it's about... In Saudi, we're talking? Yeah. The movie takes place in Jeddah, my hometown. Only it takes place in Jeddah of 1979. What was happening after 1979? Saudi Arabia closed up and got really, really closed up. That was when we were like, and then even in the, it has like a bit of the 80s in it, a bit of the early 90s. The movie takes place over like a, a, a good amount of time. And what it's about, a big part of it is how music was taboo. And um, I mean, when this was being created, I was in high school, you know, like I was not, I have no idea this existed, but what she, what she was doing, this was 2016, I was in Jordan. But back home, they were shooting this movie and um, people didn't like it. Like it, 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 it didn't come out or anything like that. Was it sanctioned by anyone or? I know. I think it was the government. It wasn't like populist, you know. And um, they took it, like they, they shut it down, the whole thing, and it wasn't allowed to happen. Because also it was even like there were scenes in the movie where like I'm listening to a song, you know, and like in the car. And uh, there's like Matawar passing by and you're like, you're like, oh shit, <laughs> and kind of thing. And it's like ridiculous to some people to think of, but that actually was the case. That was, that was the, you know, sign of the times. That was the sign of the times. So imagine this, you're like hiding from Matawar, music is all taboo. This is, it's also showing women driving. The main character is a girl and she's like, you know, she drives even when she's not allowed to, she this is music when she's not allowed to, she does like crazy stuff. She goes on jet skis and everything. She's badass. She's like exactly the kind of girl that I would fall in love for in real life. And uh, that's exactly what happens in the movie because uh, it got shut down in 2016. Come back to Saudi in 2022. And the movie is being shot again. Saudi has opened up. It's a reboot. It's a reboot. The movie was never finished in the first time even. So it's like now is the first. And it's like. More stuff has happened with the director. She found success. And also when she went outside and she found success, now she's coming back and making this movie. And it's got like now full support from the government, full support from, you know, Red Sea and everything because how much timing because of what has changed. It's still the same country. It's even still the same people from 2016. Yeah. <laughs> but what has changed? So much. Almost everything. Almost everything. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's exemplary of that. And exemplary of why I attribute so much to uh, these opportunities, that these opportunities have been coming to timing. I really personally believe it's all timing. And, and I do my best with what I have and the tools that I have because I know that it could be just anyone else. And I know because of that, there are many people out there who are super talented they would kill for this. So for them, and for myself, and for anyone else who might need it, I better do my very goddamn best. Because I'm in this position right now. So the movie pops up. Of course, I say yes. I'm already busy, full. And this again, I know what the times are. And it's like 21 days of shooting. If it's yeah. starting at 5 a.m. all the time. Is it like already started done. and wrapped? Oh, we finished it. Oh, you wrapped it. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, we finished it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Is there a release date set with uh, this? Uh... No, I think it's going to be festivals first. Like Cannes Festival and next year. Yeah. Because they do like premieres. Yeah, and yeah, of course, of course. It's like a different thing with movies. It's not like publishing and music. Shot entirely in Saudi, I assume? Yeah. So, dude, in Jeddah, will, uh... Jeddah and the school that where the girl goes to school is actually the school that I went to when I was a kid. Oh, wow, that's awesome. So like, and that was by luck, by the way, like completely uh, just like, I don't know, man. And the stuff that I would do even there, it's like, I was just myself, like my character ended up being me. And then even they even like fixed up some stuff in the script so the the character can play guitar to her and stuff like that. So I got to even be a little bit of a musician. Tailor made for Michelle. Literally, man. Like and, and imagine that. Uh, 
I'm not an actor, you know, I'm a musician. This is good for you. This is really good but for you. But it's really good for me, I think. And it, and I'm playing as myself, essentially. It reminds me a little bit of those like Elvis movies mm. from back in the yeah, day, yeah, yeah. you know, but like we have our oh, own man, now. It's so exciting, man. This this stuff really brings a lot of hope and possibilities. I just, you know, it, it, it's so exciting, man. It's so exciting. And I can't tell you how glad I am that you're in the thick of it and you're going through with it. And you have a really good head on your shoulders, Yanni. And I don't feel like it, it's gone to you. And I don't think, Yanni, if it were going to get to you, it would have by now. I think you're, you're in the clear in terms yes. of, it's not an easy to cope with, Yanni. Um, you know, the Justins and the, those who made it kind of early, when it hit them hard, it, it's, not, it's not forgiving, man. You know what I mean? And it's happening at a rate, mind you, I'm sure you're going through your share of like, why me? Uh, I'm not ready to cope, plus plus insert all the hardships that you're going through, but you seem super level-headed, which I really appreciate. And I feel like as long as you maintain, again, that, that you know support system around you, you, you'll do amazing things. We're doing our best. Yeah. And that's all you can do, man. That's all we can do. There's about a gazillion more questions I could ask. Yeah, I feel like this is a part two kind of thing. It's part, you know, <laughs> part open-ended. I mean, whenever you want, you know, you drop back by and, and we'll do this again. You just wrapped this movie and you recently opened for, for Imagine Dragons in, in Saudi Arabia, like we touched on earlier. There's more to that or, you know, there's something around Ramadan that you mentioned. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. man. So Imagine Dragons, we actually tried to open up for a year ago, also in Saudi, but it fell through last minute. And it was also the whole, the, it was all last minute, even on our part, like we, we jumped on board last minute. And then we were so bummed out because Imagine Dragons is like, oh my God, the music fits perfectly. It's like the ultimate thing to open for in back home in Saudi when they, when they were coming to perform, right? It's like One Republic or Imagine Dragons or like, th that's the kind of music field, right? So like, we were so bummed. I was bummed. And, um, a year later, we find ourselves in this position now where, you know, we're not knocking on doors anymore. We have people knocking on our door. Yeah. And one person I really have to thank, and Free Gamers 8 as well. Honestly, I really want to give a huge thank you to Ramadan. You know exactly what you did. Man, I owe you one. Mishal, this has been fun, man. Uh, I can't wait to do this again. And I can't wait to see where you go next, man. Like... Uh... Sky's the limit. Show us, show us how it's done. Show us what's possible. We'll see. We'll keep going. I, I believe in you, man. I believe in you. Thank you so much for your. Here, we'll, we'll do this. <laughs> and we'll do this. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you, bro. All right, man. We'll talk soon.